And welcome everybody to the brand new episode of the Stars of Destiny podcast. I am your host Marco Flores. Of course, I have the all evil Luca Blight. Luca Blight, how you doing today? I'm doing good today, man. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, so, yeah, we were thinking about the next episode uh, when we were going to record, and um, you know, we could have we could have recorded like almost every like every day like every week basically because uh the kickstarter is doing ridiculous right now and it's hitting stretch goals like basically every single day right as you as you see it like they hit oh easily there's there's been a few we've hit multiple in days yeah. right like when we first started like they're like yeah we need 500 grand we're like how's 1.6 million sound <laughs> yeah right like holy crap <laughs> like okay i know okay disclaimer man last hmm. episode I said to everybody, you know, I, I think that people like like Marco and I will will be like definitely in on it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. now. and I, I but I had my doubts that you know a lot of people would buy into it because they're like I don't know, you know, I don't know if they can handle this. I was so wrong. Okay, <laughs> I gotta I gotta like I will absolutely admit to every single one of you, I am sorry. I was wrong. You guys are awesome. Yeah, right. Like everybody jumped in on this. Like ten minutes in, I do my my uh, you know my hundred and eight dollars. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. And then <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, man. You know, I did my thing. Let's you know, I want to check how it's going. It crashed. <laughs> I broke it. Yeah, yeah. Kickstarter. You know, like, and, and, and not even once. We did it four times. Yeah, the same day. On, on day one. I was like, I was like, oh my god. How much money are we at? And it was like 1.6 <laughs> million US dollars or something yeah. like that in the first like 32 hours or something crazy. Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh my god, and it just kept climbing, kept mm -hmm. climbing, and then everybody just got back into Suikoden. Like it's all over the place now, and I'm exactly. so excited. About exactly, it. exactly. So yeah, um, as I'd be, like so after the, after that recording uh, before the Kickstarter started, um, you know, just checking out like you know people's discords and the official Discord got launched and. You know, everybody jumped in there, and there's an unofficial one as well uh, before the official Discord uh, launched. So, like, you know, there's people there hanging out too. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, everybody's just super excited about what's ex what to expect for the Kickstarter. And um, yeah, so yeah, we were all waiting. Kickstarter went like launched. We read up on like everything that's going on, like what's what to expect, what the what the initial stretch goals were. Um, and yeah, it, it's just ridiculous how like what it was like an hour one, right? Hour one, yeah. we hit we hit easily, the, yeah. We hit the minimum goal, right? And yeah, then, it was well, it broke. Right? It broke. It yeah, broke, that was the first time it broke. Everyone's like, so we didn't know if we hit it or not, <laughs> and then finally it came back up, and we're like, we're almost at a million dollars. Yeah, like oh my god. Yeah, right. Like so because of how big it's been getting. And like how many more new people are getting into Suikoden. Mm -hmm. I've been super careful now when I'm over on YouTube and Twitch and stuff. I'm like super careful now about spoilers. Because before I was yeah. like, man, it's a 20-year-old game. Right. You know, so we're, we just talk about it all willy-nilly. Like our first three episodes mm -hmm. of the podcast, right? Now I'm super con like conscious about it. So all you new people, don't worry. I'm not going to spoil nothing. Yeah, enjoy exactly. This, enjoy this ride into Suikoden mm -hmm. because you're going to love Ayuken Chronicles as well. Exactly, exactly. So, um... Yeah, the yeah, Kickstarter broke like four times. Like I, it was like the first the the first day was like three times, and then like the the next, what the next week or you know the week after, like it was it was breaking again because people were just just funneling money into this thing and it, passionate fanatic fans, uh, and new people too as well because like you know people you know want to join in on the hype so, so yeah. So what I think so what I think happened was like. Every single Suikoden fan, you know, just to prove me wrong, is like, <laughs> here's my money, mm -hmm. you know, screw you, Luca, yeah. right? So I think that's where the huge amount came right away, like mm -hmm. that 1.6, 2 million or whatever came from. Mm -hmm. And then I think when those people, when all those things got passed onto Twitter and Facebook and everything at Reddit, yeah, then you know, all these other people are like, you know, what's Suikoden? You exactly. Know, they see all these these people throw out all this money, all these stretch goals are happening. You know what's that? Yeah. And then they saw how awesome it was, and they're like, "Hey, man, I want to donate to that." Mm -hmm. And then they did it, and that's why that's where this extra money's coming from, right? Yeah. So I think at first it was just the Suikoden fans hitting them up, and then now we got new people coming in, and it's mm -hmm. so fantastic. Yeah. So like, so when it started to actually slow down, then we we I think all of us as a collective was saying like, "Hey." This is where the the slowdown is happening. Now we need to 
throw it out there to the, like the, the main public and the people that are not aware of what, who, what Sweet Coding is and what Euden Chronicles is and like what is the significance of this game that is a, that is coming out in a couple of years, uh, like what they need to know about it. So, so yeah, I think all of us as a collective, like like I made a, another Twitter account just for the Stars of Destiny podcast and then following the you know Sweet Coding fanatics and and you know just networking in that way and, and just you know trying to just do this 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 type of thing you know making content uh, par- uh partnering up with other other creators uh that are making like sweet coding sweet coding content and this is like the biggest boom of sweet coding like content since like you know these past previous years you know um yeah i haven't seen a boom like this in sweet coding 5 mm-hmm. yeah so uh so yeah so that's that's so that's what we're doing today we're uh, so what we're going to be doing uh for this episode is uh we're che- this is the halfway point uh, I think like what yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago was the 15th day mark of the the halfway point of the Kickstarter. So what we're planning to do is we're gonna check in and see like what's achieved, what's the Kickstarter about. Because since the last episode we didn't explain anything about the Kickstarter, uh, so we're gonna explain the Kickstarter. We're gonna check the halfway point, what the stretch goals that we hit, um, and then whenever our next episode is, we're gonna check at the very end of the Kickstarter how. Just every how everything did, and then you know, like what are we expecting when this game comes out in 2022? Um, so what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to let's see, all right, I'm going to transfer over to the Kickstarter page. So I'm going to close this, and I'm gonna open. Let's see, that's I believe yes. So I got the Kickstarter uh, Kickstarter page open. You can see right now, as of the time of this recording, we're at three million ten thousand and twenty-five dollars. So, oh my God, it's, it's nuts! It's nuts. And thirteen days ago, it's like that's that's nuts. That you know, maybe we can hit four just because. Um, maybe. <laughs> so right. So as I mentioned, as we mentioned before, uh, when we uh, recorded the last episode, the Kickstarter didn't open up. So here we are right now. We're in day. We're at thirteen days ago. Kickstarter is open. You get all the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the social media, Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and they're doing like social media games with it as well. So you're getting a little like social media, like town building, uh, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, participate in that. So, so let's see, uh, what are we? Um, I want to, I want to try to see where to start because do we start at what's the Kickstarter Wait, start, start, about? Or yeah, start right at the beginning. Right like, at the beginning. Uh, the journey begins five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, we'll go to the uh, the stretch goals. So, um, so you can go to the Kickstarter page, and if you have yet to like participate in the Kickstarter or just want to are curious enough to check it out, you can go ahead and check it out over at Kickstarter. It's called Euden Chronicle Hundred Heroes, uh, and then now we're gonna what we're gonna be talking about is the stretch goals that we hit. So, uh, at the be- very beginning, when this Kickstarter hoping uh, first started. They said the minimum journey just five hundred thousand is to just just to get the uh, game greenlit. Five hundred thousand funded. You got it in like in maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes at most. You know. Um, so next stretch goal: uh, seven hundred fifty thousand. A good place to live. Fortress town mode. So basically, it's your uh, your fortress, your castle, whatever whatever you you are familiar with with Sweet Coden. Um, yeah, that's going to be your base, and it's going to be. Uh, be growing as you gain more recruit more members and you know more you know specific uh, characters with like specific mini games and in that sense so this is going to be your hub of so the uh, best part about that mm-hmm. is remember how you saw like in some of the previews how we're journeying through towns and stuff right your castle's probably going to look like that yeah right? yeah like huh? your home is probably gonna look what if they were showing what our actual home would, would look like when they were showing that oh okay you know, the bridges and the towns like, right it okay. would look so cool it's probably gonna look like that and that's mm-hmm. amazing that's better than any suikoden we ever had yeah this game looks awesome man I'm yeah it does so excited it for does it. yeah <laughs> yeah uh so like as like the screenshots that we see that the uh the, the, the mini videos that we're checking out the small snippets of uh of the game uh you're seeing at, like as the game being like more 2.5D, so it's not not as much 3D, but it's it's kind of like the 2.5ish. So it's like there's sprites, but it's like almost 3D-ish. So it's like in, right in the middle, like that kind of like sweet spot. So uh, so what they mentioned here is like the fortress town. They made it sound like it's 
maybe the, I I want to think there's gonna be a castle in it, but like the very beginning of it is gonna be like a bunker town sort of thing. Like it's like fortresses and houses and all that stuff. And since Kickstarter is is where you know this game is being funded, a lot of the backers are like you know backing it and you know these multiple levels of depending on how much you want to like donate. And you know maybe you have your own building. Maybe you have like a soldier named after cool. you. Yeah. So like that like that's 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 what's into the uh like the what's the word like the backer levels um depending on how much you, you put in uh so either you can be like a statue like what i glanced what i glanced like looked at it was like you could be a statue you can be a soldier you can be like a np like a regular npc walking through the town um uh, maybe a monster i'm not t- not too sure you can name a town you know um that sort of thing and we'll we'll, we'll go through it we'll go through uh as we continue to talk about this kickstarter but yeah seven hundred fifty thousand, good place to live fortress town mode no, no problem easy easy so here's where here's where it gets a little nuts one million wouldn't like do you remember what time we hit that one million like it was it was it even I, like 15 minutes I, or 20 no it was it was more than that it was more than okay that. uh i believe it was at the two hour mark two hour mark dollars. two hour I mark think so two hour mark of when this kickstarter open one million gets hit and that means consoles unlock so Think of your next-gen consoles. Think of your PS4. Think of, um, you know, your Xbox Series X. Think of, you know, the Switch. Hopefully, eventually, or, or the next awesome. level, the next level of the Switch, whatever the next, you know, console for the Nintendo is. Um, like the the main home, they started off. The main home was going to be in the PC. So, like, you know, if, if say this Kickstarter wasn't going to go well, at least it'll be on PC. But we hit one million. Boom, consoles are unlocked. So, yeah, we're seeing PS4 and most likely PS5 too so likely yeah more than so it's it's so hard to tell like when we hit each goal Mm -hmm. because we kept breaking it (laughs) right so it was like we did it was like okay 15 minutes in it's broken another Mm -hmm. you know 40 minutes later it's broken again so it was it was so hard to know when we actually hit that goal so it actually could have been earlier than that but i remember being around two or three hours i looked at it we were at a million dollars yeah but at that point we broke it again so i didn't know (laughs) what we were actually at yeah so like I was I was trying to follow it at like you know on on that day, um, like while I was at work and just like refreshing just to make sure the number still either go is going up, or where I currently had the the page at like maybe it stopped so I just kept refreshing see how see how it's going, and then um, yeah it just it just kept going up and like in a drastic you know you know pace too and yeah it was nuts on day one uh, of that Kickstarter but yeah moving on. Uh, so next, uh, let's see. Next goal was culinary skills abound. So your cooking mini game, whether you think you're gonna do the Master Chef battle like Hayo, or uh, maybe how, how how what other way would you be able to do like a, a chef mini game? Like maybe like like maybe like Master Chef, where like you, you have like this uh, you know this Gordon Ramsay like dude, and he's just just talking you trash. Could, yeah. Maybe maybe you know. You have that. It could be like a challenge. Challenge, right? like yeah. You have, yeah, you have to like your character has to learn to cook, and mm-hmm. then you go up against like others, and you get through some sort of culinary school. Of, I don't know. It, it, I'd imagine it'll be similar to Sweet Kitten, but mm-hmm. it'll have a lot of different things thrown in. Yeah, that would be that would be good. That would be good. Like I, I love the chef battles in itself, but like, well, let's look. Let's, let's evolve oh, you that. Love your frying pans. I do love my pr- frying pans. You know, like <laughs> I do love them. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I, I would like to see an evolution of the 2020, well, 2022 version of what this cooking mini game is going to look like. And I mean, shoot, teams, I you know, I I, I want to see it all in this cooking mini game because that was like the main. I, I mean, that was my I don't know, that was my favorite side like side game in Sweet Su- 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 Coding too. Like, would wouldn't you agree, Luca? Like when you were going through it, like just going through the, the cooking uh, mini game. Yeah, because of like the story towards the end yeah i'm not gonna go into it because yeah. spoilers right 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 uh but yes because there is some extra stuff that goes into it so mm-hmm. if you are a new player playing sweet and into make sure to get all the recipes mm-hmm. yes make sure to play exactly. that side quest it's pretty good uh so out of the mini games yeah because you know playing dice it mm-hmm. just gets old after a while yeah uh and they fixed it that's why that's why that's why i stopped playing yeah. it as much <laughs> right so yeah i mean probably the cooking game yeah probably yeah okay uh, so we're moving on, 1.5 million is another chance. New game plus, interesting because uh, that's awesome. 
because like we're trying to as we were speculating on last episode like what does new game plus would look like uh for this game at least uh so when you go through it in like in so, previous previous games you can probably like you go through the you so, go through the story again and then maybe you get the side characters and that's about it you know not the non-stars well maybe right but maybe, what does new game plus so mean here happened, so what happened with suikin and four was very straightforward right mm-hmm. like you you beat the game and then you went new game plus and then you came in with a bunch of like items and money and whatever else okay what you uh, what you so ended with it, yeah, it, as long as it wasn't like an overpowered item like the hero set. Okay. Oh, right, right. right. We so you, couldn't, you couldn't keep something crazy like that, right? Mm-hmm. So you couldn't keep the absolute best stuff, but, you know, it carried over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Suikoden 5, you know, you, you carried over a lot of the skill points and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I'm, you know, it wasn't too, anything too major. Tactics, there was something different. I can't really say because spoilers, but you do get some extra stuff put into New Game Plus with tactics. Mm, So I think that might be what we're going towards. Okay, is there's different things. Uh, There was there was a couple little additions to Suikoden and Tactics. It gave some replay value to it. So I think New Game Plus might go more towards that route. At least I hope so. Okay, and 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 what we were talking about the last episode was. Was maybe switching which switching sides if there's if this is an option that would be amazing if there was this was the option of like you know picking you know uh, saying side I kept on saying Segan for whatever reason with uh, last episode saying side versus like um, Noah's side so like yeah that's what we're hoping hope, hoping for is speculation but uh, this like quick, like quick question to you uh, in a non spoiler way so you said tactics had a, a some new game plus stuff was it worth it. In your opinion, uh, just in you just in your opinion, it, okay. If, if you, you enjoyed it, games, okay. Yes. okay. All right, all right. Good to know. Like, like, cause for me personally, as I finished that game, I was like, I'm done. I am done. Like, cause it is ta- it, ta- um, tactics games can be enjoyable if you like the level, uh, the level progression matching with you. Like, and I just wanted to just just beat the game and, and i, I kind of like be done with right. it like yeah that, yeah so like i was done with it after i've been beat it the first well, time also speaking in tactics it turned a lot of people off because it was extra dark like that story sure. was super dark that's true that is true so, <laughs> so it, and it's it's darker than sweet in 2 it is that is true like there's some stuff in sweet in tactics where you're raising your eyebrow like what did yeah. the writers put in this <laughs> obviously no no uh uh, no spoilers here, guys, but yeah. Sweet It in Tactics, don't sleep on that game because the stuff that's in it, it's not for everybody, mm. <laughs> you know? So that kind of also threw some people off of, uh, I don't want to play this again. Yeah. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. Um, I no, For me for me personally, uh, the story, yeah, like you said, it was dark, but like it wasn't the story that, that turned me off. It was more just the, the, the level matching. Like, dang, I, like, I thought I was good here, but like I had to kept... Had to keep grinding just to be maybe okay for the next story. The scale point. was yeah. very high. The scale was it was it was pretty uh yeah pretty deep, so yeah so like okay moving on I I actually forgot about this 1.6 million new sound effects I I, I didn't I forgot about that I didn't yeah, realize it's a that pretty one. little one yeah um uh, 1.65 Far East Promise so Chinese localization big uh, that's pretty big for you know uh, the Chinese it's a big market it's a big market uh, Chinese uh, section. Is able gonna be able to play this has local localization which is good um 1.7 million uh this is the uh, interesting part guild system because we don't really oh my God, interact I'm so excited for that we don't really interact with a guild system in suikoden uh, as far as i know uh like what do you think uh yeah we don't exactly have a guild system we mm. do have like the howling voice guild right guild and stuff like that but you're never really a part of them mm. so that's kind of really cool that they're introducing this so in the Elder Scrolls series, oh. there was I know in Skyrim you could choose literally every guild at the same time, which <laughs> yeah. kind of sucked and be them all right. broken. Yeah, <laughs> but in Oblivion, you had to choose right. So if you chose like the warrior side, you know you weren't going to be really able to join like the mage side. Like you oh, had okay. to pick your story, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I can't exactly remember the exact thing about it. There was there were some you could join at the same time and others you couldn't. Okay. Right, because you were already in a, a rival guild mm. so that i loved that idea so if we're going down that route that makes new game plus even better mm, right so okay. if you have multiple guilds say that we had a warrior's guild 
and you went down that way mm -hmm. so you couldn't join the rune guild right i'm just i'm just making up names people yeah, there is yeah. this is not a spoiler <laughs> i don't know so you know you could be going down the warriors guild and then you beat the game mm -hmm. and then you go okay here's new game plus i want to be a mage system i want to know rune yeah, magic. so you go yeah. down the rune story mm -hmm. you know maybe it's like that that'd be really fantastic and that'd i think we cool. got a little bit of a glimpse of that in suikin and two when we okay. went to uh the, the college, right? You went to the college and you right. saw all those little yeah, rooms. Yeah, I think it'd be yeah. really okay. cool is if, you know, you got no way, you're walking along in and you go into this place and then you're like, you got to pick a classroom and mm -hmm. then you go into the classroom and that's your guild. That'd be really fun. That and cool. yeah. what if, what if, this is just me dreaming people, this is me <laughs> dreaming. What if there's so many characters that you have to do New Game Plus? So say you went down uh, to Warriors okay, Guild, okay. right? You've got mostly Warriors, yeah. right? And then when you went, then you couldn't get the, the room people. Right. And then you have to do New Game Plus to go down the next one. You mm, know what I mean? Now, okay. I, I'm just dreaming here, but <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Uh, that would be, that would make that, New Game that, Plus even better for me. That would be interesting in that, in, in that aspect, having like a guild of like recruits that you weren't able to get the first time. So you go into and do it, you know, you go with that guild the, the second time, maybe a third guild, maybe a fourth guild, maybe a, a hidden guild. You know, you, you don't know. You oh, don't know. Well, there's got to be a hidden guild. Yeah, yeah. It's sweet. It's sweet. There's <laughs> yeah. got to be a hidden guild. Right. It's gonna be hidden eight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, guild system. Interesting. We don't know, like in our in our end, but like we're we're hoping for these things, and you know, we'll see. We'll see what, what's gonna come out of it. One point eight million. It's a character bolstering the ranks. Per, uh, Pirelli. Is that how you pronounce it? How would you pronounce it? Pirelli. Uh, Pirelli. Pirelli. Oh, okay. Okay. Pirelli. Okay. Uh joins the ranks so Pirelli is she's an underling right of saying is that the one yeah that okay would be the one, that'd be the one right okay let me try to look for the oh it said minimum goal was reaching three hours <laughs> three hours like that's ridiculous <laughs> oh my god yeah that's ridiculous dude um let's see Pirelli okay no not 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 uh the second in command uh, she's from a noble noble family, uh, from one of the league's lesser nations. So, oh yeah, this is the uh, the noble that like what like works hard and like you know doesn't want to. Oh right, right. right yeah, yeah. So okay. Uh, so like I'll, I'll read it off. A young woman descended from a collateral branch of one of the League of Nations royal families. She's a sharp as sharp as tack, a go getter, full of fire. Uh, where other mint words, uh, Pirelli sharpens them for the kill and. and People deride her for a lack of durhamness. Uh, uh, she'd be a lovely girl, they say, uh, if she wasn't always braying. Uh, Pirelli's father, whom she loved dearly, died when she was little. She came to realize that uh, for all of the presents he showered her with, he never offered a word of pray uh, offered her a word of praise. Okay, so uh, like now she's driven by the one thing she can never have: her father's approval. So. She's a noble by like class, but like kind of down to earth about everything, and like maybe like she's like city, she's hood. I don't know. Um, in that sense, but it like, reminds me of a character. It does definitely reminds. Does me it remind you of a character? Sure. Okay, okay, got it, yeah. got it. it so definitely reminds me of one. Okay, so so uh, we have a hundred and one character now. So like, oh, what's going on with this? What, like, we're getting more than hundred characters. Yes, we are getting more than hundred characters. If we're hitting these goals, because yeah, people are still giving money at this point. Uh, so Pirelli uh, is unlocked. You have a new character. Uh, we'll get to see what she does. Whether she's a fighter of some sort or maybe more in the background, we know we don't know yet. Um, but yeah, so uh, I mean, any thoughts about Pirelli uh, at this point? Uh, just a character, or well, I think uh, she, she. No, this isn't a spoiler because everyone mm -hmm. can look up this character. Uh, she reminds me a little of Chris. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, in the fact that, you know, she never got her father's approval. She's kind of, you know, she's rich. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a good fighter. Mm. Yeah. And that she's also, you know, like, uh, no nonsense, right? Like, just get straight to it. I think she's going to be a very likable character for me. Like, Chris was my absolute favorite character mm. in Suikoden 3. Okay. 
Uh, and she actually makes my top five for favorite characters, oh, actually. Oh, nice. Uh, so to see a character that has personality traits similar to Chris, mm. uh, you know, that, that's exciting for me. So I think she actually is going to be a character that is prevalent in the story. Okay, uh, yeah. But probably not to the point, you know, that you would uh, consider her a main cast, I don't think. Right. This is just a very strong, uh, like, side character at, you know at this point right yeah so okay all right so that's Pirelli uh 1.5 uh, 95 million get angling uh fishing mini game fishing was fun you know fishing uh game mini games were fun uh from so we could one of my favorites yeah from so we could too and then it, like it, they, it made it simple it was simple you know it wasn't like too hard where you needed like specific bait or like you know uh the, the I like degrees vibes so you can if so you can have fives. I have to remember. Yeah. I don't remember much. I, I mean, I probably uh, well, played you, it, but you competed against uh, you competed against other characters. Oh and... yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That's right. I'm not going to mention any names or okay. anything, right? Yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> but yes, there is one uh, in so we can have five that is probably my favorite. Okay. Um. The the one in four wasn't too bad, but I definitely enjoyed five. So I'm hoping mm. they're going more towards how five did five theirs. did theirs. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um. Fishing. Uh. Fishing has been in there since two. Um. If you know anything about Sweet Coden, a lot of mainstay characters are like actually enjoy fishing. Uh. Not to say any names, as we're not spoiling it for the new people out there. Uh. But yeah, fishing mini game, pretty cool. One point nine uh, nine five million. Two point one million. Stay out of the water. Uh. You furious. The seventh joins, and this has prob is probably the 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 Western states probably most loved beloved character, uh, Euphorious, uh, because basically look look it's it's a street shark, <laughs> it's literally a street yeah. shark, uh, with with a you know a swinging mace like I, like how, how how can you not love anything that looks like you know Euphorious and, and looking badass like that you know and. It, so I mean, like, what, what, what do you think? Uh, generic character. Generic character. Oh, as, okay, okay. As much as people are gonna be <laughs> upset about it, right? But if we take a look back through all the Suikoden games, mm. any character that resembled a beast character of any sort had like two lines. <laughs> they were real strong. Yeah, and that's they true. Did nothing. Right? Okay. <laughs> like they added nothing to the story. <laughs> so it won't surprise me. If he's got some generic lines that, you know, <laughs> you might at first be like, oh, cool. And then yeah. you play it again. You're like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot up. about it. <laughs> you know, I think he's probably going to be pretty generic as much as people are like, oh, he looks so cool. He's a mm. street shark. And yeah. This is awesome. And <laughs> I don't have too much. No, for no hopes. No, I'm not. You know, my hopes aren't too high for him. Yeah. Like, I'm just it. like, eh, okay. I mean, if I'm wrong, which I have been a lot lately, <laughs> uh, then perfect. That's yeah. good. I like being wrong. Okay. Wrong That's makes good. wrong makes us get three million dollars right. towards uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So yeah, you furious? Like I, I love the design first of all. It's the street shark. I mean, it goes back to me like watching the the, the cartoon show. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the the bio really quick. Twenty seven years old. Imperish Arc is the home. Avocado sushi uh, is his favorite food. Uh, a shiar, of course it is. <laughs> a shiar, I'm thinking the Shi'ar from the X-Men. Shi'ar Ark guard captain, originally from the Imperish Ark. Uh, his people desert, his people's desert nation. His strategic eye and masterful ability to mount a defense have helped him secure a mercenary, help him secure mercenary work in many a town. Euphorius looks uh, may look scary, but he's capable and detail-oriented commander. Who makes sure to uh, learn the name of every soldier who serves under him? Uh, the quote: "Well, who gives who gives a tooth?" Ooh. Yeah, so yeah, he has like a little bit of like he's there's, Alexander. There's talks of like commanders and and leaders and like you know, um, like you know, like your shoes, like your your Mallridge, your Mallridge. I, I gotta look at again. Uh, fun, fun fact for people here: if you're not a history buff, mm -hmm. Alexander the Great was actually very well known for memorizing every soldier's name mm. in every battle that they participated in. Got it. In. Got it. That's kind of a cool little throw in there. Yeah. So he's like, I like that. Maybe I am wrong about this guy. <laughs> so yeah. So like his quote is like, "Well, who gives a tooth if they try to flank us? Well, we're ready for them." Oh my God! Who gives a tooth? Really? <laughs> okay. Oh my God! I, I can see. I, I can see Lucas. Uh, Lucas like 
teetering levels like oh yeah it's pretty cool oh no he's not a girl man they had me they're like they're like yeah he's like alexander the great oh that's so cool yeah here's a bad dad Dad joke joke. (laughs) enjoy oh really oh man yeah yeah so you furious uh i guess is going to be polarizing uh, actually, yeah, uh, Euphorious is is popular in the states, but not as popular in the in the you know in the east. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Just oh, because they had those uh, character polls. I don't know if you if you if you saw that you know in the, these past. I did not see the, the what the end result was. No. Yeah. So character polls. They had character polls. Euphorious was like for the west, and like I think Sane was for the east. They were they were very much uh, going for Sane uh, in the east. I was born in the wrong continent. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so okay, let me go right there. Okay, so that was Euphorious. Uh two point two million total need freak. Hildy joins. I think I, I think Hildy was the second in command of uh Sane. Yes, that yeah. is that is correct. That is correct. So yeah, that is Hildy, military family, twenty one years old, sugar toast, uh, is their favorite food. Sane's right hand officer is capable a capable aide uh with an incredible attention to detail sometimes. Uh, Hildy is so prepared that she's ready to carry out uh, her orders before they're given. Uh, while she hails from a famous military family, uh, her a disputable a- act attributed to her father has sullied her on- their honor. Um, she is determined to restore the dignity to her house. Hildy's hobbies include tidying, organizing, tidying, cleaning, and tidying. Uh, when she's in a foul mood, she chases soldiers from the barracks and cleans the dickens out of their pl- out of the place. Uh, their personal f- effects included, um, and so they are extra careful not to rile her up. Her quote is, "Everything's been everything's been arranged, sir. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing my job." So anyone's lucky to have a, someone like Hildy at their side in the battlefield. Just don't annoy her. So. <laughs> oh, uh, so basically, if Monica Geller was an yeah, anger, <laughs> right, right, right. Oh man, I don't like this energy. You know that's, that's that sort of thing. Oh man. Um, and then uh, oh, okay. So let's see. So that's Hildy. Um, d- other than being a neat freak, uh, we don't know anything else beyond that. Uh, beyond the the bio that we just read out, neat freak, uh, second in command of saying, um some honor that needs to be restored within the family uh but may, of course dad had the reason had it had his reason to do what he did so like we're, we'll probably find that out so yeah uh let's see 2.35 million letter rip t- uh top battle mini game so uh there was a top game in four or five do you remember uh you mean the spin the spin in the top yeah, it was it was like it's been the, the uh yeah was it four? I want to say I, if four. It, I didn't spend a lot of time on the mini games in four because they drove me nuts. <laughs> uh, but I believe you're correct. I believe it. I believe it was in four. Mm. Uh, as for I, I don't think it'll, it'll have anything to do with any of this weekend games. I think this one is going to be much different. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be like. This the way society's been going is definitely much more like uh, multicultural. Mm-hmm. So maybe this will be, you know, kind of geared towards uh, everybody, right? Like I think it's gonna have some sort of aspect that we haven't really seen. So I, th- I think we should expect something different for sure. Right. With this. Okay. All right, and so no, we're, now we're moving on towards the next stretch goal, which is two point four five million dollars. Uh, the Honest Soldier Maxim. So let's go ahead and see where I had him pulled up right there. Got a little. He's look like the the portrait looks like he's he's not finished colored in uh, exactly, but uh, he looks like a flamboyant, not flamboyant, but like charismatic uh, aristocrat sort of thing. So uh, it says Maxim, age 24, profession officer in one of the league's armies. His favorite food is uh, roast beef. Uh, second lieutenant in the army of one of the League of Nations member states. Uh, he's earnest to a fault uh, and is, isn't is shy about professing his ideal, idealistic views. Uh, fortunately, his soldiers and friends see past that and recognize Maxim as a likable person, likable and honest man who just wants to achieve his very best. So, his quote, I already know the secret to, su- uh, to success. Care to hear it? It's quite simple. 
Uh, don't stop trying to succeed. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, Maxim, Maxim sounds like he'll make a reliable ally. Maybe he's a little too naive. Um, I guess uh, we'll see in the final game. Um, let me see. Okay. So that's Maxim. He's pretty straightforward. Like like I mentioned, a little like charismatic in his in his look and uh, demeanor. Uh, carries like a mm, like a what was that? Not a is that a long sword? Oh, what'd you think? Uh, like a regular sword, right? Um, yeah, regular regular sword. Yeah, I mean belt buckle bigger than his waist. Uh, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Uh huh. I'm not gonna like this guy. It, not at all. <laughs> he's gonna be too. I'm uh, not gonna like this guy. He's gonna be the Zamza. And that type of character <laughs> that's always like too brash. Think he's fi thinks he's figured everything out. Uh huh. Just reminds me of me when I'm 15. Uh, you know? okay. I just no thank you, man. <laughs> this is not a character I'm gonna like. I'm, like I hope I'm wrong. I uh -huh. hope I'm wrong. You know I've been wrong a lot. Yeah. So I mean, cool. Yeah. If I am wrong. Cool. It's another character I like, but based on his <laughs> bio, based on his quote, mm. it's just fifteen-year-old Luca you know, <laughs> shooting his mouth off. No thanks. I'll pass. I don't. I don't need to see that. I've already oh, seen it. Oh, that's funny. I lived it. <laughs> yeah, I lived it. No thanks. That's funny. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. So that is maximum two point uh, four five million dollars. Well, let's see. That is character number. Let's see. Uh, one. Two, three. It's character number four, 104. Uh, we're seeing right there. So now we are uh, moving on to 2.5 million dollars. Uh, New Shores Korean localization. Now we have another uh, location that's going to be able to play this game uh, in Korea. Uh, so that's Very pretty big cool. Market. Big market, uh, of course. Very big market. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. You have China. Now you have Korea. Uh, let's see what we're going to be going uh, towards next. So like the more. Places that we are able to uh, get this game localized and, and, and in places, the the you know the better and you know more successful it can be. So yeah, uh, 2.6 million. This is where I think people were gunning for uh, as we were going through stretch goals. Is real brass, uh, full orchestra. So super excited about that. Yeah. So uh, we had uh, orchestras in uh, I think where it started in two. We had like a full full on orchestra. And then, and then it came from there, and then it just it became a staple, right? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's something I need to see in all Suikoden related games is the full orchestra. Yeah, uh, and the music is so well done, mm. so well done. It's incredible. They're so talented. Uh, so I I really really needed to see this. Yeah, and I'm so glad it's, it, we got that. That's cool. Yeah, that, yeah, we were. I, I know I think I remember like it, like of course the the Kickstarter was like slowing down as you know we were getting used to like the just the immediate pace of like just oh we're just shooting up in the money uh but when we were getting to 2.6 like oh, okay we're getting a little is a little slowing down it's like oh we're gonna get it uh we should get it i mean we have a lot of days but it was yeah it was a little little tension uh there in terms of the, trying to get the uh the 2.6 million but we got it so that's cool all right so uh 2.7 million this is pretty interesting words with friends party conversations so uh where do you think party conversations is gonna gonna look like for this game what do you think i'm super excited about this and the reason why is we saw it in suikoden tactics hmm. in suikoden tactics you could develop relationships on the battlefield oh, with multiple okay. characters that's true that a lot is of true. characters that you didn't think about right like, mm -hmm. of course the main cast did it but you had some like care some repeat characters from suikoden 4 that could do it you mm -hmm. had new characters that could do it it would and it, you know you would develop these you know uh character bonds and i think you know, with Suikoden and Tactics, it's very straightforward. Mm -hmm. I think with a game like this, it could be very, very well developed. Like, you know, you bring yeah. certain characters together, and you'll notice just the, you know the AIs are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Maybe you you learn a few things from about the character. Maybe some right? unites. Like, so maybe, yeah, maybe. Well, it could be like the backstory is yeah. just hidden within these conversations. Okay. Right. Suikoden always did that. Mm -hmm. Suikoden always had you know all these little things that were hidden away right like the first uh glimpse we got into into that was like you know you sent your detective to check out this character right right that happened in speaking into and you know without going into any spoilers you found out stuff about characters and their backstory by little things like that so mm. i think okay. if we have this happening especially at your home base right you walk right, around yeah. your home base and you see characters actually intermingling and speaking with one another mm. uh that would be really fun to see 
I, I don't want to see a casual conversation. I don't want to see just nothing. Mm, yeah. You know, I want to see something important. Uh, you know, side missions. Maybe. Well, yeah. Like say, say you don't know how to do something, right? Mm-hmm. Say there's, you know, some sort of uh, side mission that you had no idea was actually a side mission, but then you hear two characters talking about it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, you know, some sort of uh, monster that's over here that's been tormenting this small village or whatever, and they they heard about it, and then you overhear this conversation, and mm-hmm. you're like, cool, and I'm gonna go do it. You know, something like that. I would love to see them do that. We saw it a little bit in the Elder Scrolls series. Mm, you would okay. see, you know, you know, the guards would tell you, you know, stay away from, you know, this pathway because there's Falmer around there. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you go out and you're like, of course, you're going to go kill a Falmer. And then you get a mini, you know, you get a little quest from it. So I'd love to see that sort of thing kind of thrown in there. And I think that might would be what it leads to. Okay. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds cool. Yeah, I do like the idea of like just having a kind of a backstory filled with through conversation and then maybe leads up to uh some sort of like a mission for that character that you know you you go through while you either have your free time or you along the way to your main campaign mission and um either like you get the effects and if you succeed maybe you get a unite out of it maybe you get like uh just uh faster pace like you know interaction with in combat uh maybe uh, like uh, relationship alignment you know where uh, you have these certain co- combination of people then like they they perform better in, in the party sort of thing so like it's pretty interesting to see like what this party conversation aspect is, is going to look like uh for this game so yeah that is that for that uh for uh party conversations so 2.75 million is uh pretty soldier Melor. uh let me go ahead and pull that person up really quick uh, all right so here we are with Malor. um <laughs> the first instance i got just seeing the picture of Malor, uh is like um she reminded me of meg but as a sailor scout like th- that combination really uh <laughs> so like yeah she has she has this this big old wand with a heart shape on it and there's uh there's this like circle thing like maybe like the center of it and uh, on it so maybe something happens with that uh she has like a, a like a fluffed up like you know, uniform leggings and all that stuff like very very scoutish like very very like it says okay let's let's go through it so uh Malor, uh 12 years old profession she's a magical girl like okay there you go uh favorite food chocolate cake Malor is on a grand adventure to become a mage uh, but what she pictures in her head, what mages actually do, uh, are, shall we say, two different things. Uh, she's completely convinced that the spell singing magical girls depicted in one of her father's books is what the job is all about. So she has like this, uh, like this as- assumption about uh, uh, mages. Uh, let's see. So the quote: "In the name of love and justice, I am a lore, and I call my magic." Uh, she doesn't quite get what being a mage is all about yet, but she'll figure it out eventually. Okay, so that's Malor, magical girl. It's hitting all those, those, those points. Um, any thoughts there about Malor? Well, I can say that I hated Sailor Moon growing up. <laughs> my sisters used to love watching that show. Oh, got it. And okay. every character to me was cringe. Oh, uh, okay. So I really hope this isn't going to go down that road, but it could. <laughs> uh, maybe this is a character that grows on you. Maybe. You know, maybe at the start of the game. They drive you crazy. You don't like them. Mm. Every time you're on screen, you're like, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> but as the game goes on, you start to grow. It okay. starts to grow on you a bit. Uh, I'm picturing like a less mature female Luke. That's oh, what I'm wow. Yeah. Because Luke was a jerk. Mm-hmm. Luke was very immature. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had this image in his head that wasn't actually true, right? He he believed certain things, and it was just like you're a kid, shut up. Yeah. And eventually, Luke grows on you as the as the game goes on. Okay. I'm hoping she's the same. Yeah. At first, you're like, you're a jerk, <laughs> and you're annoying. Yeah. And then as the game goes on, her character changes, and you start to like her. Maturing her. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Got it, got it. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm. But with her being an additional character, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> mm. okay. okay. I got mean, it. we're talking about wrong Luca here, right? We, uh, I'm wrong all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but uh, 
this character does not stick out to me as a character that I'm probably going to like. Mm -hmm. But again, I hope I'm wrong. Got it. Got it. So, uh, yeah, Magical Girl, she's feeling all those aspects. I'm pretty sure people will enjoy what she brings to the table. Um, me, I'm, you know, I got, I got no feelings about her. Like, I just, that's what she just looks like. She just looks like Sailor Meg for me. For uh, So, uh, one thing I'm either kind of hoping that will kind of make me like her more is if she has her own gadget, uh, you know, another character that was in <laughs> suit coding. But, uh, but in terms of like, you know, being a, another character, maybe she's able to like wear gadget as like armor, almost Megazordish in a sense, right? Uh, but it's like exoskeleton type, uh, <laughs> maybe barrel uh, armor. So just jump from Sailor Moon. Yeah, right, right. Basically, basically, <laughs> just hitting all those Sentai and Magical Girl, uh, you know. Uh, notes so yeah that would be pretty cool I, i'd probably like her even more if she has her own gadget and then she's able to wear the gadget as like you know exoskeleton armor sort of thing so <laughs> yeah so that's uh, that's malore um let's see uh this was a secret uh, stretch goal a 2.8 million background check psychic detective agency um not much not much to, to describe on it uh like we had detective agencies since two uh, in Suicode, and so like you're basically getting to know uh, your recruits, uh, you know what, have, what makes them tick, and then you're also able to just uh, scout out and see who, what other potential recruits that are out there. But this says psychic detective agency, so that's that's a little interesting in that itself. Like maybe they're just in a, they're just like a fortune teller trying to say, like, hey, there's maybe somebody at this place uh, that you maybe you may be able to recruit, sort of thing, kind of like O'Neill from uh, Sui Code in one with the gossip but like in a psychic sense um, but yeah what do, you, what do you think about this I'm hoping this is some sort of comic relief mm, okay so I'm hoping that like this person is just full of shit <laughs> and yeah. like you go to do always giving you know, the wrong answers to, always giving the wrong answer and or you hints. gotta figure it out yeah so it's like you're at the doors of the labyrinth and everything's a lie mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. so this person just like tries to steal money from you basically yeah like, right, okay, right right you know i'll take this information mm -hmm. kind of like the zombie in necklord's castle in uh, sweden one mm -hmm. you know just take a certain amount of money from you and give you a bullshit answer that's totally wrong <laughs> and then you gotta figure out where what in the lie was actually truth and yeah then, and then, like, you okay know, get that character doing this or find this side quest doing this Right, so and I'll have like maybe random ones in there that are just literally the complete opposite. Like go northwest of here, it's actually like southeast. You know, like <laughs> oh gosh, I, be... I'm hoping for some sort of crap like that. Yeah, it just infuriates. That's me. yeah, like, that does sound infuriating. Uh, like ah, I could have had like 108, and like yeah. you misdirect me all the entire time. That's that's fine. It would be so fun. That's fine. And you have to like, you have to reverse what they're saying. Like oh yeah, you go up, but you actually go down or. That's yeah, sort of I think yeah. that'd be better than like, you know, Oboro's agency mm -hmm. in Sweden mm -hmm. 5. You know, that one was pretty straightforward, just told you what to do. Yeah. You know, Richmond just like told you what to do. Yeah. You know, it all the the detective agencies just kind of just were like a cheat code into finding mm -hmm. the 108. Where I think if this one just threw a monkey wrench into it and was just like, <laughs> they they just suck. Yeah. That'd yeah. be great. I would actually love that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I, I do like that idea. Uh, for a detective agency, because like we have, like you said, we're used to the, the straightforwardness of a uh, of the agency uh, and with the characters. But uh, like just yeah, throwing a curveball at it, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty, pretty funny. Um, so 2.85 million uh, gets you the trading mini game uh, uh, economy on, of scale. So like the the trading system was in uh, Sweet Coding Two. Uh, they went it basically went all the way to five, right? It never skip the game yes yeah so yeah, the trade trading was there from Suikoden in two right into Suikoden in five okay uh and it got more and more prevalent actually and became mm -hmm. basically the the default way to make money right 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 and instead of using gaspar to just cheat your way to just you know yeah, fund, funding right. the war you actually had to go through the trading mini game and it, yeah um not to spoil but like there's specific characters i'll say characters uh, where it was it was prevalent uh, to uh, get you know maybe maybe try to recruit them in, in that sense so yeah exploit them exploit them and <laughs> yeah true um, yeah so like trading was prevalent uh, from two forward 
and uh, that was your basically your go-to way to make money. So you just have to know like which item was uh, selling low here, and then finding out where they sell high elsewhere. So uh, yeah, so this mini game is back. I uh, wonder what how they're gonna uh, evolve the idea. Would that be pretty? Which would be pretty interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, mini game. We got another mini game out of it, which is cool. Uh, Two point eight five million dollars. Uh, so two point nine. Uh, is another character so it's called a uh, the clock watcher roadie uh is the person uh that we are seeing so roadie um it's a kid um let's see roadie uh age 13 son of a league's craftsman his favorite food is pretzels so i'm noticing that there's like a lot of foods in this game already like there's it's a japanese thing yeah so yeah it's, oh because yeah okay like foodies basically so um so yeah, so a boy who dreams of becoming uh, being a great watchmaker, uh, he is a little disagreeable. Uh, yes, but uh, there's something about the sparkle in his eye as he gazes and transfixes at an elaborate timepiece. So he's very much into his clocks, his watches, and all that stuff. And but he's a kid, so like you know, um, he has a lot to learn about. I guess you know about life and and what he does. So uh, the quote is, "Oh, what? So that what makes it tick." Well, I could put it together, uh, put together one of these easily. Just give me a year. Um, Rody seems to be pretty determined to be a watchmaker. Let's hope they can one day achieve that dream. Uh, so that is Rody. Pretty straightforward. Just a little kid, bushy hair, has a watch. Um, fighter, maybe, probably, maybe not. But you never know. <laughs> we have, uh, we have Malor, um, not Malor, but like uh, Malridge with like just riding. Uh, his way into making spells and, and in combat so maybe roadie is in is in the time sense of combat maybe who knows um yeah any thoughts there luca about roadie i have very few expectations of this character yeah they uh it it sounds like a very generic just kind of thrown in idea mm, okay and i hope like again i hope i'm wrong mm -hmm. you know but based on what we can see from him and, and what we know about him it doesn't seem like a character that's going to generate a lot of interest. Okay. But uh, perhaps they're just hiding that. You know, maybe there's a lot into it. Maybe there's some sort of clock dimension that you get stuck in, and he has to clock help you. I don't dimension. know. Clock you know, dimension. Okay. You know, like you know, you know how in uh, Final Fantasy VI uh, there was like a, a painting that you had to go into the right. world of the paintings. Yeah. Maybe there's like something to do with like a clock there. And I, and I remember it's also in Final Fantasy VI there was uh um like a puzzle to do with clocks mm. and you had to like go around and talk to everyone in the town of zozo and they oh, all gosh. lie yeah that's right <laughs> so everybody in the town lies so you got to figure out where the truth is mm -hmm. kind of like how i was talking about the psychic uh and then you know you use basically everyone tells you the answer mm -hmm. and the answer is whatever they didn't tell you right 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 right, right? so right. that was and maybe he will be in some sort of uh, situation like that where you, you know you need him for a clock. I don't mm -hmm. know, but uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of expectations for this character. May well, I mean, if he's a person that is like a function in a game, maybe you're able to rewind to certain parts. If say like you messed yeah. up and so maybe I could I could see that maybe you know uh, I was you know a time limited character and you screwed mm -hmm. up and he's yeah. able to like time travel for you. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. So that's, that's kind of broken. Yeah, it would be broken. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, that's Rody. Uh, let's see. Two point nine two five million dollars is Western uh, linguistics. Uh, Brazilian Portuguese, uh, basically localization. Another area that is going to be able to play this game, which is, which is great, which is always good. So you got Very that. Much yeah. So, uh, South America uh, is going to be able to play this game. Got the got the stretch goal there. No problem. Uh, 2.95 million is uh, and they're off racing minigame. Um, when was there racing? Do you know? There wasn't. None at all? <laughs> None at all? Uh, no, not really. There, there wasn't any real racing. I mean, you had to okay. somewhat race Stallion. <laughs> okay, by, okay. Uh, you know, but that wasn't really a real race. Yeah. Uh, so nothing, nothing that we would actually determine as racing. As racing. So I think this is going to be something new. Mm -hmm. that we haven't seen before which is really cool i don't like seeing uh everything being the same as a suikoden so it's nice to see yeah that there's stuff in there that uh we're not seeing so maybe this will be a race with horses mm -hmm. or you know maybe boats or you know something along those lines. little animals sort of thing right mm -hmm. yeah okay 
All right, so that's it. Another mini game right there. So, uh, <laughs> as we go through it, like you'll see, like how many, how much mini, mini games is gonna be uh, if we hit these uh, these stretch goals. Uh, so let's see. That's, that's actually that's the second to last one that we achieved. The very last one. Uh, let's see. More money, more problems. Uh, go. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. Go Tatsu. Uh, no, go Tatsu. Uh, Baktu maybe. Baktu. Okay. So. Um, we don't know. Gaktu? Yeah, Gaktu, so maybe. Gaktu. So we don't know anything right now because uh, in terms of the updates, they stopped at Rhodey. Um, so it's another character. Something has to do with money. We don't know. Uh, but that what what? How many characters is that now? Uh, one hundred and seven. One hundred and seven. Wow. Well, one more. We go. To, we all have one hundred eight. Um, maybe they'll do more. Uh, we don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the latest character that's going to be joining as of right now uh, with. Uh, let's see. What is it? Thirteen days? Say, thirteen days left. Yep. At, at the yep. time of this recording, it's thirteen days left. So, yeah. Um, let's see. And then uh, now the the goal that that we're uh, coming up against. Actually, we already hit it. It just hasn't been official. Is uh, three million. So we're at as of right now. Then this recording, I'm showing it on screen. We have uh, three million twelve thousand seven hundred seventy six. You know. Uh, in terms of money, so like we're good. Uh, so the three million is hot springs. So you remember the hot springs, the baths in Sweet Code and One. Um, you're able to like you know how you know go into these baths. Uh, you know in, in terms of the party, females have one side, males have one side. Um, you're able to like decorate the the baths uh, how you see fit, like w with a combination of like you know items, uh, and then certain combinations is able to like. Uh, show like you know different effects and maybe have different effects on the people too uh, So like yeah, pretty cool that hot springs is like the hot springs bath is is coming back into play um, And then so like from uh, in one it was just like a decoration effects thing in two it became it, it also had that but it also gave you like, you know hidden like conversations with certain combinations of characters uh, so maybe we'll see that and uh, maybe we'll see Maybe some of the uh, the party conversations coming into play into that. We don't know, uh, but yeah. What do you think, Luca? Hot Springs. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, Hot Springs was more interesting in Suikoden uh, three and mm. five. Okay. Or, sorry, not three. Four and five. Four was and five. The more interesting ones. Uh, four, you had to go to a specific spot because mm -hmm. it was at the Ne Cobalt Island. Oh, so that was uh, okay. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And then in Suikoden five. You had to go to a, a town with again another uh, um, you know, sub like another species. Mm -hmm. uh, they ran this uh, hot springs and you had to help them out and get it get it running again. And it, it was a little more interesting in, yeah. in four and five, but it didn't do a ton. So this isn't something that's like you know it's not something I'm super excited about. It's just kind of cool to see it again. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so and then we'll. Uh, so that that's that's the goal that it is unofficially we hit, but it's, it has yet to be official on the page. Uh, the next one after that, uh, three point twenty five million uh, is going to be got to catch them all. You have a monster raising uh, raising uh, mini game. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's going to go as far as Pokemon, but like you're maybe you're able to uh, rally and corral some like monsters in the field, and then you're able to raise them, and maybe maybe they can become party members. Is what I would think. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking more of the lines of like you you catch like some sort of monster or, or animal mm -hmm. and then you raise it You know you raise a bunch of them and then you can just kind of uh, have them help you out during a battle. Yeah, yeah uh, So pretty straightforward in, in my opinion, but and you probably have some sort of uh, You know guide that you know you check off each monster or, or yeah. animal or whatever it is and you you know in a way catch them all and yeah. raise them all and you probably get some sort of uh, you know, some sort of goal. For, yeah. You know, trophy. Like a super trophy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's the next one that we need to hit. And then there's other goals. Uh, 3.5 million. You have uh, building your dream. We don't know what that is yet. Uh, 3.75. Uh, Cyrillic lyric. We don't know what that is yet. Um, so those are the stretch goals um, that we are looking at right now in terms of um, you know what we need to to get to if uh, we're trying to hit more stretch goals so uh, it's pretty crazy that we're at three million basically and we're still basically going so 
We have 13 days at the time of this recording, so we don't know how far this Kickstarter is going to end at, which we'll, we'll, we'll do a recording, like I mentioned before, uh, at the end of the Kickstarter and see, you know, what are we, what are we expecting uh, as uh, we move forward. So, so that that's it for the, the Kickstarter portion. Guild system a little bit, room lenses. So they, they mentioned something about room lenses in one of the updates. Uh, let's see, it says room lenses are the back backbone of all power in the world of EU and Chronicles. Lenses have different significances, significance from nation to nation and culture to culture. Uh, but people everywhere have learned to harness their magical power and have then have handed down that was handed down the wisdom down, whether to cast spells, use supernatural powers, or to wield lenses symbolically. Uh, claiming to be divine gifts, uh, re represent a communion with God. Uh, the lenses are commonly crafted into weapons and, and accessories. Uh, however, the Galdean Empire has figured out how to amplify those lenses' powers by placing them inside specifically engineered rings called regules. All right, so that's that's the first paragraph. So the most valuable rune lenses are sometimes handed down through families. Uh, there are also some of, some individuals who are born with them inside their bodies uh, many heroes have their own rune lenses uh, no doubt uh, you've noticed the, on the back of marissa's hand or per, uh, uh, pirelli's hairpin uh, but you may encounter heroes who don't rely on rune lenses at all uh, the room uh, the lenses importance carries over into the game system by affixing runes to your hero's lenses you can give uh, give them magical new magical skills uh, new magics and skills uh, or perhaps improve their physical abilities each hero's lenses is unique and supports rune supports runes of different type rarity and quantity uh, some lenses may already contain a specialized rune that cannot be removed others may require runes to to a certain type to be affixed in specific positions and when the, your heroes level up, the number of runes uh, their lenses hold can potentially increase. We hope that the, uh, the players uh, will use the system to create a roster of heroes that feel personal and powerful. Um, what do you think about that? Like, it sounds like the rune, like they're talking about a rune and then the lens to that. Uh, and there's like, you can uh, pick certain combinations from the rune to the lens. And then you have heroes that have like like runes or lenses in them. Like it, like what do you think? It's, like, it's a lot to in terms of the regular rune system that we're used to in terms of sweet coding. Well, sort of. Yeah. So I think they're combining all the ideas. Okay. So in in sweet in one, you had just your average rune, and you could only attach one rune right. went into your ray hand. Yeah. But you also had rune pieces that went into your weapon. Weapon. That's right. right. So you chose you chose which one went into your weapon. Mm -hmm. In sweet in two. You had three. Mm -hmm. Certain ones could only be attached to your head. Okay. Right? So that that kind of covers that one section where you were talking about how some are, are fixed to certain locations. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. So we have we already had that in Sweden and Two, where you know the uh, the gate room, mm -hmm. uh, that one had to be attached to your head. Mm. There was ones that were only able to attach to weapons, and then other ones could attach anywhere. Okay. And then when you went into Say, uh, Suikin and Five, you're able to use combinations of runes uh, if you had both equipped to you. Mm -hmm. So you could use, say, you had a Thunder and a Fire rune, you could actually combine those two super powerful attacks and do that kind of thing. So it sounds like more of a refined idea of runes. Okay. On Suikin and Four, we had rune cannons where they literally right. fired them out of cannons. Yeah. Uh, so. In this, I feel like they're taking every idea they had from Suikoden and refining it into one really cool idea. Mm -hmm. In a way, it does remind me of Materia a little bit from Final oh, Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, it's, it, but it is different. Mm -hmm. And now, as for runes being inside them, I mean, Crowley does have a famous quote that he has 100, 100. runes inside of him. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, Luke did mention something about that as well, but no spoilers, right? Mm -hmm. so, right. Uh, so, for us to learn exactly what it is, we're going to have to wait for the game to be released. Uh, but for everyone listening uh, to get a better idea of what all these runes could do, I suggest you actually play the entire series. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to see 
all the different types of instance we've used runes, whether it's on our weapons, on our hands, uh, on you know giant ships, whatever it may be. I think this is going to be a very complex system, and it's yeah. going to be really fun. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm kind of interested in see what they're gonna, how they're gonna evolve that rune system that we're all used to, um, in terms of combinations and where to like they'll fix them, and if runes have specific like you know how we have like you know people to people unites and we have magic unites but we have now we're gonna see maybe rune lenses uh like aff affiliation sort of thing uh maybe uh that'd be interesting to see and uh, what we're gonna be getting into in terms of that um but yeah that's pretty much it for the kickstarter part uh, uh there's all you know all the information of the stretch goals and what this game is going to be up, be about it's right there on the kickstarter uh we'll definitely put a link towards uh to it uh, on you know the, the description of this of this video or you know um on the audio and as well um so what we're going to be doing now we're going to be moving on from this uh is to talk about what happened afterwards like after time passed so uh yoshitaka Mari mariyama uh, did an uh, AMA uh, on Discord, on the official Discord, on um, both the English side and also on the Japanese side. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have the the summary of both ends. So we'll go through each of the, we'll go through each of the questions uh, that that's, that was asked, and uh, maybe if we have some thoughts, we'll we'll share it. Um, all right. So here's here's the AMA uh, that was uh, taken uh, that was done on the 8th of August. Uh, so like I said, uh, he. Yoshitaka did an English side as well as the Japanese side, so we're gonna delve into that right now. Um, let's see. So uh, I was, I was. Were you in the AMA at the time? Trying to ask no, a question. I was no, working you at working? the time. So okay. Kind of sucked. Yeah. So I, I was in there, and it was nuts because everybody wanted their, you know, those those their questions answered basically, uh, and people were like either repeating it, repeating their questions, or trying to just, just trying to see, make it shown. Uh, some were translating their own question, so they, you know, Yoshitaka can read it. It was, it was nuts. It was basically, it was nuts, basically. Uh, it's like a Black Friday, uh, if anything, <laughs> when you try to go shop and you know people are tra trampling all, all over you years prior. Um, but yeah, so first question, uh, it was like a you know easy, easy going question. What's your favorite snack? Uh, there's an apple sable cookie from uh, Omori. I like recently. Enjoy hearing about other people's favorite snacks. He said he likes uh, spicy snacks. So like a little, little you know, introduction question. So now we get into like now we really get into it. And question two: Would you be open to the idea of having characters that pay homage to Vicky, Jean, or Lecknot do their due to their ability to be anywhere? I'm very excited to see uh, the original EU characters, but I was thinking be way these would be uh, fun Easter eggs for old fans of your work. Uh, he answered. If Konami let, agreed to let us use those characters, we would. Unfortunately, it isn't likely, so it probably won't probably won't happen. What do you think in terms of this? Like, how is there? Like, what do you think will be That's the a way? Shot. It is it's a shot down, but it was like, what would be a way that, to no, work no, around that's that? That's a shot at Konami. Oh that's yeah, a shot at Konami. for sure. That's uh, that's hey, look, our, the fans like it. Mm -hmm. Why are you guys jerks? Yeah, <laughs> you know? okay. That that that's flat out what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a shot at Konami, and I like it. Yeah. Good. He should do that. No, of course, of you course. Know, Konami's yeah. handled all this very, very poorly, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it would have been fantastic if they allowed them to use characters like that, because Konami's not getting anything mm -hmm. out of holding on to those characters. Right. Right. They just renew. They're, they're just renewing the IP for no reason, other yeah, than just like, holding it. Like they're they're literally just holding that out of stubbornness. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, like the only way they're going to make any money off of that is selling it. Mm -hmm. So maybe add that as a, you know, if we could finally find a way to add that as a stretch goal, you know, buy these characters. That'd be cool. <laughs> then uh, that'd be fantastic for them. Like, yeah. Those are the only reoccurring characters in every Suikoden, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So with, with that, like those, those are like the characters that everyone loves, like the, especially the creators. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I feel like it's a shadow Konami and it's a good one. So yeah, uh, good on them. And I hope that, uh, you know, one day we'll be able to, to see those characters again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I mean, of course they, <clears throat> they they can work around this in terms of like, it's not Gene, but it, it it quote unquote is you know um, in terms of like yeah yeah you know my people are this and you know it's like you know Vicky's people or Gene's people or like Knott's people, uh, but they're not like Knott they're not Gene they're not Vicky, but 
you know they're they're related in some so, some sort of sense so they can kind of do that in that sense but like they have kinda to like, like how kind of like how dragon ball yeah uh super <laughs> did uh kale yeah and yeah made, and kale had like very similar lines and transformations to broly yeah there you go you know <laughs> yeah that, that was always really fun or so. Or, yeah, they could do something like that. Or, or Dan, you know, for Capcom's, you know, shot at, at SNK, you know, for Rio and Robert. Yeah, that, that, was, that was just funny. Yeah, that was just funny. for sure. And now he's back in, in Street Fighter V, which is awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, number three, uh, you can tell us more about the rune lenses. What are they? How do they work? Are there perhaps 27 true ancient rune lenses? Uh, so he says, uh, it, this is Iudin, so we can't say there will be... Uh, 27 exactly, but there will be several, so can't really copy and paste Suicoden into Iuden, but there will be some sort of similarities, I think, so. Um. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, there are not, there's certain things they're not going to be able to, and mm -hmm. there are certain things are going, they are going to be able to do, so a lot, I've heard a lot of people say, uh, you know, you're, they're not going to be able to do the 108, mm -hmm. but they are. Right, because right. it's based off of a Chinese novel. They are, but they are not. not but they are. Su Suikoden wasn't just, uh, you know, an original idea mm -hmm. that Konami owns. It was based off of a novel yeah. that has to do with 108 people. Yeah. So, really, they can do the 108, but the 27 true rune kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I believe that is just a Suikoden idea. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think they'll be able to do that one. Uh, that one is a little bit more of a subtle shot. Mm -hmm. You think? You think Yoshitaka is gonna take shots at Konami as say like say like there's a character that kind of looks like oh yeah that kind of looks like looks oh, like yeah. like Luke or like looks like Tyr or Grumio Grime but like just just oh, yeah. yeah like just obliterates them and like oh like oh they're just a small soldier and he got taken out by this weak thing sort of thing uh, they can totally do that. Um, I, 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 some sort I, of shots fired yeah sure. there's there will be I now as we're talking about it now there, there has to be some sort of shots fired uh, in that sense <laughs> and um I what was it I was either, I was either looking at Twitter um, and I think I retweeted something where it showed like like a like an inverse look of blight it was like it was like uh, good look of blight uh, it was like he was smiling he was like a good Ugh. guy I, yeah yeah I know it made you sick but like I was like dude that, and he was in the white armor I was like dude that's literally Luca Blight, but like, you know, happy, you know, on a good day, Luca Blight sort of thing. But yeah, no, it, <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> it, it, it was, a, it was, a, it was an attack on you, on your character. So <laughs> yeah, it's grotesque. Anyone who made that should be ashamed of themselves. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is gross. Oh man. But yeah, uh, I forgot, I forgot where I saw that. I, and it, I think it was like in a, in the depths of hell that's what you, saw you did that. it, i mean it's twitter but <laughs> um so close enough it's close enough uh, i want to say it was like an official like dev person that like made that character and it's like oh, and, and, that official dev person needs to be fired <laughs> what is wrong with them <laughs> but yeah I, I i would have to like dig dig back into my own like you know my t timeline and see where that found that but yeah uh number four will the uh will the game have a romanceable option uh he said if anything Yoshitaka said, "If anything, I like the bond between a parent and a child. So he's not—he's not saying there's going to be like romance directly. Um, maybe there'll be that like that shy romance in that sense. But like his main answer is, I like the parent—the bond between a parent and a child. So we're probably we're probably going to see more of that in the forefront than we see like a tear and Kasumi uh, relationship or, you know." Good. Not every story needs some sort of romance uh, story to it. Yeah. And we have noticed with Suikoden, if there is a romance in involved, it's usually a tragic one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Not gonna say any names. Not gonna do anything that. But yeah. uh, new listeners, uh, you know, if you, if you like that sort of thing, uh, Suikoden does a little different. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I've always enjoyed the way they did it differently. Yeah. So I do like the fact that he's saying, you know, he he enjoys bonds. Uh, between family mm. rather than that lovey-dovey story that you always get yeah uh, between some sort of character yeah so oh and, and he had more to say like in my previous works uh there aren't really a, a core focus on romance as a core feature however several characters and, and relationships uh could have some romantic turns in the story but there won't be a core focus so like you'll see it but it won't be like right in front of you like oh yeah it's right there we can we can make it like a like a, a Final Fantasy classic Final Fantasy like oh like I'm gonna pick Tifa for this uh, carnival 
uh, you know, Carnival, uh, you know, part of the the mission or the story, or I'm gonna pick like Aerith, you know, or Ares, uh, or I'm gonna pick Barrett or Yuffie or whatever, you know, uh, if I really like trash like you know uh, Aerith and and Tifa sort of thing, um, but yeah, it's, it'll be there, but it won't be the, like the main focus is what he's saying, which is which is fine by me, you know. I like it. I'm good. Um, number five, I want to question. Uh, I want to. You know, he says. The question is, I want a question not related to Euden, but Vandal Hearts. Yeah, Vandal Hearts and Sweet Odin. Playing through Vandal Hearts again, uh, feel the stories feel similar to each other. So my question is, uh, did you have any influences on the story of Vandal Hearts, or was it just a coincidence? Uh, Vandal Hearts was developed on the floor close to ours, so like next door neighbor in a sense. Uh, so I didn't have a direct influence on that game. So it was a it was a person asking, not related to Euden, but you know they just wanted to ask them. Uh, number six, sorry. If about this if you already answered it but will you be adding duels uh, and will there be war battles uh, version like Sweet Coden 2 uh, for the duels look forward to it in a future stretch goal interesting response uh, for large scale battles they will be in the game in some format so duels interesting. duels is probably what I want to see most uh, in terms of this game because I loved how the duel system was in, in the previous in Sweet Coden games um, just the sh- the, you know, trying to figure out what the tell is of your opponent with the rock paper scissors, you know, form like you know a uh, system, and trying to you know make the right right uh, decision and if you got it or not and, and that sort of thing. Um, so like I would love to see more duels uh, be inv- like evolved from like just I want to see more duels that that just happen between uh, just between like your your recruits. I, I was thinking of an idea of like. Um, you know, you have this fortress town and they, you know, your soldiers or your characters have to have a way to like say, quote unquote, work out or see like who's, who's the top guy in their, in their, you know, in in the fortress town. So maybe you'll have like a a tournament bracket or like, you know, a top 16 standing, you know, on a point system saying like, oh, so, you know, this character, uh, beat, you know, this character, uh, at this time. So they move up on rank sort of thing. So like, I want to see something like that, uh, in terms of a dual system, but like, um, but the, the duels itself, I do, I would love to see duels come back for me. Uh, but just more, 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 not only as the main character going through them, but like as your side characters uh, going through it as well. Just to see if who wins out in the battle, you know, two out of three, five out of, you know, seven or that sort of thing. So, I mean, what do you think, Luca, uh, in terms of duels and the, and the war battle? Duels are a staple, man. You got to have yeah. them. Yeah. Right, we've had him right from Suikoden in one uh, yeah. going forward as well, and I, and I don't mean to keep talking about this game like it's Suikoden mm-hmm. because it's not. It's it's the Odin Chronicle. It's its own game. Right. But we got it. You know, it, it's the same creators. It's where the inspir- right. inspiration comes from. So, but we have to have those duels. Mm-hmm. Those duels are are just there's so many iconic scenes that we can't talk about right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, there's so many iconic scenes that were came from those duels. Uh, Suikoden 4 actually did the dual system the best, in my opinion. Mm, okay. uh, I know I know nobody wants to hear me talk anything positive about Suikoden 4, but sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it was a good game. Get over it. Yeah. Uh, play it. It's good. Trust yeah. me. Uh, so I think if they went to that route, I would definitely like to see characters other than your main character duel, mm-hmm. which we got to see in Suikoden 5 which is pretty cool. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but throughout most of the series, use your main character. Yeah. So I would definitely like to see our, uh, you know, our, our secondary characters do it mm-hmm. as well, just like you said. Uh, as for the large-scale battles, they've always been different, mm-hmm. and I feel like every single time there was good aspects and bad aspects, so they never really quite found the best one. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got their opinion of what the best one was. My favorite was four. I know a lot of people oh, like ships. trees. Oh, ships, yeah. Right. Um, so it, it's it's really subjective. Mm-hmm. I think this time they're probably going to nail it. I think they've had enough experience that these large-scale battles are going to be something to look forward to. They're not mm-hmm. just going to be story filler like some of the games. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll put all of it, all of them in. <laughs> Maybe they'll put yeah. the the mini the small mini ones from one. Maybe they'll do like you know the the character positioning from two. Maybe they'll put like you know locations in three. You know, yeah, like in the ships and then yeah. Maybe they'll do all of it. Maybe you know you never know yeah. too. 
Um, maybe it could be. Yeah, or maybe they'll do something completely different. You know that you know it's a new game. That's what I think is going to yeah, happen. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe it'll be just a culmination. We don't know. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, next question. Let's see. How does uh, Yoshitaka and Mariyama feel about the option of palette swaps on the main character? Something like three or four alternating color choices. Uh, he says palette swaps are fairly expensive when dealing with pixels, so I cannot make any promises. Uh, but we're looking into into that and seeing what we can do. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with keeping it at the, just the same palette swap colors. Um, I was thinking more like uh, like outfits, just outfit changing, and you know. Um, so, I mean, go ahead. We we saw outfit changing in Suikoden in Five. Yeah. And it was the most disappointing thing I'd ever seen in a Suikoden sure. game. Sure. Sure. It was awful. It was really bad. Mm. Uh, in my opinion, right? I mean, some people might like it. I hated it. Mm. I couldn't stand it, especially the final one. It was so bad. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know what? Noah looks good as he is. Mm -hmm. Leave him alone. Leave yeah, him alone. Yeah, sure. That's true. Uh, I, I think just stick the way it is. Uh, if you do, if you do change it, right? You do have the option to change outfits or whatever. Make it like. It's not mandatory, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Make it so that's just an option. That's that would be my yeah my, yeah. Uh, my suggestion to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would I would I would have to agree. Um, it's not really necessary, but like I, if they are going to the to the road of like you know different outfits, I want them to be super ridiculous in some form or fashion. Um, like it makes it makes me think of Yakuza in in the series where, uh, Kazuma Kiryu can like be. A, a luchador wrestler the entire entire game uh and it, it doesn't af affect the main game at all he just you just see him in like in a, in a wrestling mask and like he's you know he's a wrestler like you know he's he's topless and he has like you know uh uh underwear basically for just as a wrestler sort of thing tights so uh yeah if you do if you're gonna do outfit switching i, I would love them to be as ridiculous as possible uh, wherever, <laughs> however they're gonna look like. Maybe you you can have outfit switching where Sane looks like Noah, Noah looks like Sane, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I mean we'll see. I, I'm for I'm I'm on the boat of like outfit switching. Uh, just yeah, make them ridiculous, and it doesn't affect the game in in, the, in its main story sort of thing. So yeah, so let's see. Going on to number eight, uh, you tease two stretch goals uh, uh, DLC. Uh, but we have yet to see either up here. Uh, are you able to give more details on those? How large scale are they? Will we perhaps see one soonish? So he says, I cannot give you uh, specifics, uh, but it'll be fairly long content, and we are shooting for each piece to be several hours, up to 10 hours. That's interesting. Uh, when we can reveal those, goal those goals uh, and depend on how much uh, future support the campaign will get, basically. Um, Hmm. Okay, several to up to ten hours of DLC, additional missions, maybe a mini mini campaign sort of thing. Uh, what do you think in terms of post DLC? Well, I, I think that uh, it's definitely their goal, but I don't know if they'll actually reach it. Mm -hmm. It, it seems like uh, they're they need more funding than uh, than they expected. Yeah. Uh, and we're slowing down pretty heavily here, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. Uh, I, like, I would definitely. I, hey, any more extra uh, content we get, then that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not. Uh, uh, sorry, my monitor just went out. No, you're okay. Okay. Um. So. Uh, and, and and we have yet. Uh, we don't. We don't need to forget that. Um. Uh, Mariyama said that anything that's DLC is going to be free for the backers, so there's that too. Um, that that's a good thing. That's yeah. definitely a good thing. Um, the fact that anyone that did back it gets that free DLC. Mm -hmm. uh, DLCs people always had like a negative yeah. look at it, like like it was already created and it's just a way of grabbing more money. Yeah. In this case, it's literally they just they need more money to mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. Uh, so I like the fact that you pay for it ahead of time and mm. it, it's there for you. I mean, I'll just go wait and see. You know, we'll mm. just wait and see what it is. If it is up to ten hours and they're gonna do several, yeah, that's gonna add quite the game. It's yeah, be a long game. And They'll be the longer the better. Yeah, so you can have the the main game and then plus the length of basically Suicoden One 
on top of that if in maybe uh, you know one DLC and then you know and another DLC like all together if you put them all together then you have basically suit code in one uh, game length basically um, but yeah we'll see well yeah that is way way there is a lot and then there's yet to go through the uh, um, the Japanese side uh, what'd you pick a question uh, uh, pick number 12 sure okay go for it go and read it out okay so number 12 uh, hi Maria Nariyama san uh, do you plan on having additional joiners in the new game plus so like I talked about in Suikoden and Tactics mm. uh, Also, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. I love Suikoden and look forward to this game uh, The response was you'll be able to get all characters on your first playthrough. Mm. That's a bummer That's a bummer. <laughs> I was hoping for more of a Suikoden and Tactics thing there where okay. you could get you know additional characters bonus characters uh, on your second playthrough to add replay value. Mm. I was hoping, like we were talking about, you know, right. choose different sides. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This tells me that's not going to be a thing at all. Mm -hmm. That okay. tells me they have one storyline and you're sticking to that one storyline. It's a bummer, but I mean, it's still, it's still going to be a great game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we were hoping for 100. 100 side you know on one side 100 on the other side but uh, it doesn't look like it's that's going to be the case but um hmm, okay uh let's see let me let me go look for one uh something something that people are maybe maybe not aware about uh question number 20 hellfire uh rpgs i believe uh is stated that the kickstarter comments that uh Higashino Mickey has already retired, so people, you know, want the basically the old cast back in terms of making uh, the uh, Euden Chronicle. Um, let's see, uh, Higashino Mickey uh, was the one of the composers, correct, for uh, Sweet Coding? I believe so. Or basically, made the main one, basically. Uh, yeah, I so. yeah, so Higashino uh, san is one of my very important friends. However, she can't work on the project due to private reasons, and I want to respect that. So, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it is what it is. You know, she's she has to deal with whatever she's dealing with. Um, uh, but you know, we're getting the next best thing uh, for the people that's are, that are, that have been announced in terms of the compo composer. So, um, yeah, let me see. Let's do pick two more, and I'll pick two more, and then we'll we'll close it out for the AMA All portion. Right. I got one. Okay. Number 23. Do you like the Godfather movies? <laughs> All right. Here's a hot take for you. His response one is that he loves them. So okay. you know what? He's got bad taste in movies. Oh. That's right, people. I said it. I said it. The Godfather movies suck. Oh. Those are boring. You know, they have stupid little tropes in them. That's and, and while I'm at it, Final Fantasy IX sucks too. Oh, I'm that... people. Okay. I hate it. Just like I hate the Godfather. Oh, movies, you know? that's go funny. ahead and at me. Go ahead and at me. Luke is evil, man. Let's go. Oh, dude. That's die, what... pigs. Die. Die, pigs. Just like your crappy Godfather. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me go and pick one. Uh, no... <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Uh, number 27. Thank you for your answers, Mariyama Sama. Mariyama san. Uh, will there be characters or quests that we need to reach before a certain time, like Suikoden 2's Clive? So time-based, time-locked uh, quests. So he said, uh, we were thinking about whether we should add those type of characters in the game. Uh, we're finding them or getting them to join uh, your team is not easy to figure out. What do you think? Um, you know, when I go through Suikoden 2 specifically, I, I don't feel the need to go through the Clive quest, even if I want to know, like I'll, I'll just like what well, I'll like I'll look it up on YouTube if anything. But like I don't want, I don't have the urge to want to do it myself. I want to enjoy the game for me personally. What do you think? I think the time on it mm -hmm. killed it. Yeah, because the actual story of this is fantastic. Right, Clive's backstory is one of the most fun backstories mm, of any okay. side character in the entire series. Uh, the Howling Guild. Uh, the guild, the, sorry, the Howling Voice Guild yeah. is really interesting. They're so cool. There's like, I suggest everybody once they've played all the games. Okay, don't don't dive into them mm. uh, ahead of time because it'll you know spoil you. Yeah. Once you have gone through all the games, try to do Google searches. Try to do whatever you can to research on these guys. Yeah. They're fun. Okay. They're they're really great, and I wish we'd seen more of them. 
So Clive's story was fantastic. Elsa's story was fantastic. It was awesome. But it killed it with the time thing. Hmm. Because one, Suikoden 2 has such a fantastic story. You get absorbed in it. And you just want to find out every little thing about it. And you don't have time when you have when you have that such a small window. I think it's 20 hours. Mm -hmm. You have such a small window to get to each spot. Right? You're like 8 hours for the first first one 11 hours for the second one 15 hours for the next one mm. i didn't like that at all yeah so if they removed that right the only way was to do it you know if you could do that without the time mm -hmm. i would love to see that yeah me too yeah but uh i don't want to see another time goal i don't want to see that yeah thing. me neither i'm i'm i will i'm interested in take, take, taking a look at it but like i don't want to i don't want to go through it in my own game you know, my game playthrough in terms of you know doing that yeah, it's so, not fun yeah so okay, um, let's see. Yeah, they they asked everything, and not everything was asked. To, uh, not everything was answered too. Okay, number twenty nine. I love Hugo riding the Griffin in Suikoden Three, uh, but also being able to use them separately. Uh, will be will we see anything interest any interesting character interactions like that in E Unit? So we, Yoshitaka says that's. Uh, that's definitely challenging and we need to make sure that this style of pixel art will work if it does I will certainly certainly like that kind of gameplay so he's interested in the thought of the system that was uh, that was in three basically where uh, you know if you had like you know characters with uh, with the animal and you know they have affiliation of some sort then you can ride them and then they're based you know if you played it there it was pretty much broken uh, so so he's, he's he's considering the idea of ha having those type of characters uh, that you can interact with and maybe ride on. Um, I'm I don't know what you think. Like I, I was I was when I, I in experienced it like you know my couple times playing through Suicune Three. It's like oh man this is this is really broken because like if I'm max if I'm mid maxing my you know Hugo and then I put Griffin on and then mid maxing him then like it was it was almost like yeah. easy mode. No in thanks. Sense. Yeah. It's broken. No, thank you. Uh, unless they found a way to balance it a little bit better. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think stay away from it. Or use it in cutscenes, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that'd be Maybe cool. Maybe as a way to travel. Mm -hmm. right? Say you have a griffin, and that is your way of traveling rather than an airship, because that seems to be the, the default thing for every, <laughs> yeah, every right. JRPG is, oh, we're at this point of the game. You airship. can just fly around now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it would have been nice to fly around before. <laughs> so maybe th that will be, you know, and rather than just the, the default airship mm -hmm. we get a griffin we get a giant you know something yeah. along those lines uh we got that in uh final fantasy 4 or mm -hmm. 5 final fantasy 5 mm -hmm. when you had uh the cedra oh, the right. thing that looked like cedra yeah yeah uh whatever he was the you know nessie mm -hmm. dragging your boat along that was that's right cool. so maybe if it's something like that mm -hmm. i would enjoy that okay uh but I, i'd rather stay away from uh, that because Suikoden 3 got kind of broken with that. Yeah. Not to say Suikoden 3 is bad, people. Play the game. It's very fun. <laughs> but yeah, like you were able to, there were things that you were, you were able to exploit uh, in terms of like, you know, just being a, a, an unstoppable party if you just oh, mid-max yeah. characters and yeah, certain characters that I have affiliations with too. So yeah, All right, that's it. Um, you know, final one for you, Luca, what do you, uh, which, ones, which one would be it? All right, number 59 on the Japanese side. Okay. Uh, I am a big fan of your characters, even outside of the Suikoden series. However, I would also like to see characters similar to Vil Vincent, Milich, mm. and Augustine again. Mm. I really enjoy their personalities and deeds. The response is, I like them too. I always try to give them a certain specific type of mobility. Uh, what I enjoy is that combined with their appearance, they are not too obnoxious. Mm. No! Please no. <laughs> I do not want to see another one of those characters. That's always the character I hate the most. So we are going to see them, for sure. Yeah. But I hate him. I'm just going to throw it out there, guys. <laughs> I don't like Vincent. I don't like Milich. I don't like Augustine. Mm. I hate Simone. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of you screaming at the screen right now. Yeah. Man, those are great characters. You guys suck. Okay? <laughs> I'm just going to say it. You guys suck, just like those characters. <laughs> the only time Augustine was ever useful is I'm not going to say, because it's a spoiler. It's a spo so, you know what? <laughs> You can take your crappy character uh, and get out of here. Oh, they can die like pigs. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, that probably will be the preview clip, if anything. <laughs> there you go. There oh, you man. go. 
Um, yeah, I think. Or the Godfather one. Or the Godfather one, either one. Maybe I'll, I'll do, we'll do both. Um, let's see. You can clip that one, put it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> everyone mad at me. It'd be great. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Yoshitaka likes those characters. And I think he already mentioned it before this question was asked that those type of characters were going to be in the game, too. Uh, yeah, that's it. That is it. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's the AMA, uh, guys. Um, if you guys are interested in you know checking out what was asked and what was answered, I will link it uh, as well in the, in the description of uh, both the video and the audio side as well. Um, but yeah, so finally what we're going to be doing is we're going to showcase and highlight uh, creators that ha are covering Suicoden. Um, and not only as of late, but like they have been uh, as well. Um, so... You want to do a like a, a back to like a back and forth like you I name one you name one sort of thing and and sure. why okay cool so put that out okay so uh, one of the creators of uh, that I want to highlight uh, for me is uh, I got to know these two guys uh, really well because they like one they were doing a playthrough of Sweet Code and they were doing streams on it of course uh, and uh, it, it was interesting because one of them likes like loves Sweet Code basically so he was introducing the other guy. Uh, to the game so they, they were able to do a let's play of it and um you know it was it was a fun thing because they were doing uh, uh voices like different voices for each of the characters you know so tier had well Gr grimio had a voice you know necklord had a voice so like it was all different it, was, it wasn't like a same like sound level voice uh for the characters everybody had different voices basically so i want to highlight two scoundrels uh so they had their let's play on youtube uh they're on their head they have a youtube channel they also stream on twitch as well so it's two guys uh rob and carter um actually uh i have i need to let you know uh, luca that they want to kind of do like a sweet code in uh like a sweet code in type podcast uh just to just to talk about their thoughts of of the, uh, of the first game and they want us to be on be on that podcast so uh yeah so when they're done with sweet coding themselves uh we'll probably be on their podcast uh, just to talk about everything that is about Sweet Code in one. Um, I'm in. Yeah. So yeah, two scoundrels. Uh, definitely check out their videos. They are they are funny funny guys. Um, they do what they can in terms of like you know trying to work schedules schedules out with each other because they live in separate towns sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, they're they're funny funny guys. They're they're covering Sweet Code in, and they're probably gonna do the other games as well uh, since they're finishing up with Sweet Code in one. So that's two scoundrels. Uh, yeah, check them out on t on on YouTube and on Twitch. Uh, so that is two scoundrels. Uh, so Luca, who's uh, who's somebody that you want to highlight uh, next? Uh, number one, and totally not biased at all, because <laughs> you know, not friends with this guy or nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, Drago Nooch over on Twitch. This yeah. guy's fantastic. Uh, great personality, fun guy to be around. Uh, While playing Suikoden, in this guy, and like big fan of of not just Suikoden, but a bunch of ton of other other JRPGs. Yeah. Like this guy is like, the man for that kind of thing. Uh, you know, super supportive guy f towards his uh, his supporters, his followers. Mm -hmm. This guy, when he's playing through Suikoden, has a different voice for every single character oh, okay. himself. There you go. He does this on his own. He finds up, and you know what? He does fun things like he gives Victor a Russian accent, <laughs> which is just hilarious. Yeah. He gave Necklord sounds like Count Chocula, which is <laughs> yeah, awesome. There you go. Mathayu sounds like Chocobo Sam from <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. Nice. This guy is great. He's so talented, super fun, super supportive. Uh, th th this guy just has the most fun playthroughs mm. you will see, uh, when especially when it comes to voices. You know, he's got a Smeagol impression that oh, yeah. literally you would think you're watching Lord of the Lord Rings, of the Rings. <laughs> nice. when this nice. guy does this. Uh, he puts up special things, like if you are on his twitch and you donate 108 bits you mm. get a special suikoden pop-up oh you yeah know, suikoden fans will love being around this guy okay cool so uh, i think people should jump on over to his channel check him out the uh, i it, you will not be disappointed i promise you yeah the, the voice acting is on point the guy's got a sense of humor and a very genuine connection with every single follower that's cool that's cool yeah so that's drago nooch uh uh, one of the uh, creators that we want to highlight Twitch. over on Twitch, <laughs> um, yeah. So that is Drago Nooch. So another one of creators um, I was uh, hanging out and getting to know uh, was Carcala. Uh, Carcala, she. So the thing about her streams is, um, I guess she was uh, she was just playing like you know Nintendo games uh, all throughout her life. So there's there's all these backlog of games that she has yet to uh, you know experience. So. 
when I first stumbled upon her stream, she was playing Sweet Coding. So she was trying to get to know like the game and in, in, in that sense. And like I did the thing because I'm not used to this. Like when I'm in any type of person's Sweet Coding streams, I kind of like to guide them where they need to go if they're not sure. <laughs> yeah. And like I, I got I got reprimanded for that. I was like, there's no there's no it's a blind playthrough. It's no backseating whatsoever. So like, oh man, I'm not used to this at all. But to see her get like to, to to see her uh like go through the emotions that we all went through our very first times playing sweet coding uh you know all, all the things that happened in that game um uh and 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 the frustrations of like either you know finding bosses or getting finding characters uh that trigger points that didn't that didn't happen exactly the way that should happen sort of thing um it was all fun to experience in her stream so like at at the end of it like not to spoil anything but you know, I, I think we have a new, brand new Sweet Coding fan because uh, she wants to experience the other games as well. So Karkala, she's a very cool, cool lady. She's just going through the games uh, right now. She's going through Final Fantasy Tactics and getting to know that. And like, I, I'm I'm more quiet in that end because I don't know it as much as I do Sweet Coding. But uh, it's just fun to just hang out and and. And she has a Discord where you can actually spoil the things that uh, what she's gonna go through. So we were, that's where I was letting out all of my like guiding uh energy out of like oh she's not doing this she's not doing that oh she forgot this she, you know that in, in that sense um but yeah Karkala, definitely check her out on, Twi uh, on twitch uh she's uh yeah she's 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 really great in terms of you know being entertaining and she's just yeah really cool person uh you should ch definitely check her out Karkala, on twitch um and yeah and she and there you get to vote on what the next game she's gonna play next and it's it's more than often often than not a game that she has never played uh so yeah you're gonna you get to experience her first reactions to everything with her so that's that's Karkala on my end um but yeah who's another one uh who's another creator that you want to highlight well based on the same uh things that you were just mentioning uh, Jen Sana over on Twitch. Mm. If I'm saying her name correctly this time, I've messed it up many okay. times. Uh, she is basically the same thing. Right? Okay. She's uh, experiencing the game. Uh, hold on, I'm going to turn this back up. My bad. Okay. Oh, there we go. So she, well, she's experiencing the game firsthand, kind of like you were just mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's got this uh this interaction about her towards her followers uh she you know of course doesn't want too many uh you know spoilers mm -hmm. here and there but she'll also ask for help here and there and we'll, we'll inter engage people uh refuses to use any cheats yeah so that, that's uh you know i i try to tempt her anytime i'm in there i'm like hey if you you know you do this i tried to trick her actually into using the, the matilda glitch <laughs> okay uh, i almost succeeded i almost <laughs> succeeded until she realized that she was about to use a cheat uh, so just okay. very fun very interactive uh you, seeing that that joy enjoyment that they get out of first time playing of suikin mm. is great and just like you were saying i believe she has a newfound uh you know probably favorite game and yeah. I, I don't want to you know speak for her but it, she seemed very <laughs> happy playing Suikin in 2 when i was watching that stream yeah for sure for sure that's cool all right is that is hellfire rpgs they are known for just covering rpgs in general um youtube channel is right there as you can see uh hang on but yeah they've been covering uh Euden chronicle uh they have like a few videos on it now like let's see one two they have three videos now uh, and from a few weeks ago to four days ago, so yeah, they're they're basically following Euden Chronicle um, just because they're they're excited as we are. Um, they they made a video on basically the announcement, another video on everything about the Kickstarter, and then another one about the Q and A with Miriyama. So yeah, Hellfire RPGs, and they they did talk about all the R JRPGs uh, that are out there in terms of reviews, in terms of just talking about it. Um, but yeah, that's Hellfire RPGs. They they do some really quality work. Uh, so definitely check out Hellfire RPGs. So yeah, how about you, Luca? What's the next one? Uh, up next, I have Big Daryl, 1986. This guy's Darryl. over on Twitch. Uh, I saw him mostly streaming Sweet in Five, hmm. big time. You know, he plays the whole series, but Sweet in Five seems to be a one that he likes to focus on quite a bit, mm -hmm. uh, which is good for Sweet in Five fans. I know a lot of you are forgotten during this. Uh, <laughs> During this talk of Sweet In, we're always talking about Sweet In Two mostly. Yeah. Uh, Five's a great game, and he is very knowledgeable about not just Sweet In but Final Fantasies and all sorts of other JRPGs. Very knowledgeable, down to earth guy. Uh, you know, he'll suggest games for you. He'll bring up games 
you know, and he's not above, you know, trying new games that you suggest to him. Mm. This guy has a pretty good following uh, in terms of, you know, how uh, connected they are with each other, how supportive they are of one another. Very good guy to follow over on Twitch. Uh, just down, really entertaining, too. The guy it finds a way to be just both informative and entertaining at the same time. That's good. That's good. That's cool. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, so these I'm going to be listing are from a sweet code and right revival movement. Um, they're people, the people that they're, uh, you know, telling people that, uh, yeah, these people are covering the Uden Chronicle in some form or fashion. So I'm going to go down through the list as you can see on the video side. So like it says Phoenix, Phoenix edge, uh, RPG podcast. Uh, I guess they did a podcast on Euden Chronicle, super Derek's second related Euden Chronicle video, uh, level eight. 857 did a video on it. Switch RPG uh, did a video on Euden Chronicle. As I mentioned, Hellfire RPGs um, covered it. Game Break, Kickstarter update and discussion. Let me see. Kimberly Wallace uh, from Game Informer uh, wrote an interesting article, uh, what many fans would like to see from Euden. And yeah, that is all uh, from Sweet Code and uh, Revival Movement. Another one I want actually want to shout out because uh, you know, I was uh, looking around, and uh, it was popping up when basically when uh, Eden Chronicle was being first announced. Is uh, Pelvic Gaming, Pelvic Gaming, out there, a uh, uh, fan of uh, Eden Chronicle as well. Um, let me see if I can find her really quick. Yeah, I watch her channel too. She's great. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so the video's right over there, uh, just sharing the news about a Sweet Code and uh, spiritual successor. I mean. A lot of people are making videos about this, so people are excited for this, uh, for for this to be happening, including us. We made a podcast about it, uh, basically. So, uh, so yeah, so those are the people that I want to highlight uh, from the Sweet Code and Revi Revival Movement post, and then also you, you see as I was scrolling down, there's a lot of videos of people just wanting to cover this game. Um, but go for it. Uh, what, what were the rest of the people for you, Luca? Uh, in terms of okay, uh, so this guy's um, got one of my favorite names yeah uh this is vicious grandma <laughs> okay this guy is great man this okay great. he's got a super good sense of humor as you can tell by his by his name mm -hmm. uh a little smaller on you know for the following size he's just starting out yeah the guy's got a great sense of humor he's uh you know he's open to backseat gaming so if people like to go in there he's open to that he's not above that he's, he's completely okay with it okay good uh he's, <laughs> he's a little new to sweet kittens and uh, a lot of times ask for help and <clears throat> You know, just really fun to watch. He's a family man. You know, he's you know married, has kids. If you're into that type of thing, you like seeing a guy that you know just loves his family and likes to spend time with them, and also his streamers and has fun playing video games. This is your guy, right? He's your down to earth, everyday Joe, but also uh, entertaining, very fun to be around. Okay, so up next we have uh, Cashel. Now she's interesting. She's uh, she's got like this quirky kind of you know personality R really fun to watch because uh she'll go have these like you know super high moments where uh she's all kind of all over the place but mm -hmm. it's just very very fun to watch uh she's super into jrpgs she loves sweet and of course that's why we're talking about her here mm -hmm. uh if if you go over to kashel's twitch page there you'll see all sorts of games laid out but she likes to play a lot of sweet too nice and just how into the game she gets it's just entertaining just to see her react to the game alone let alone you know the combined thing going on yeah so i definitely you know suggest people go over to her uh so some of her uh her, her voices are, are pretty entertaining nice there you go so so next on the european side we have mm. jamie jew uh on twitch there he's over in uh in europe this guy is you know he's pretty interesting yeah because at, at one point he'll you know he, he likes playing Suikoden and he likes going through those games but he also likes to find you know, and ask about you know stuff that is wrong in Suikoden like what, oh, okay. what is not good about yeah. it you yeah. know kind of you know likes to throw that in there like mm -hmm. hey you know what how does it why does this part of the story not make sense why does this not make sense mm -hmm. he likes to throw that in there which is fun because it's there's too much with with Suikoden, and I feel where everyone just blows it up like this. It's this perfect JRPG series. Sure, sure, yeah. Everything has faults. Yeah. There is no perfect game. Okay, 
uh, we're close to it this weekend, mm-hmm. let's just say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just just how fun that he, he is into getting into that. He's very supportive with his followers. He likes to interact with them constantly. Even when you're not talking, he'll try to get you to talk, right? He'll, mm. he'll specifically call out people that he doesn't see in the chat, right? <laughs> so if, you know, he's got three or four people that are normally in the chat, you know, he looks at his followers and he goes, hey, you know, and he'll call the person out by name. Yeah. You know, hey, what do you think about this? very interactive very good guy okay uh you know the only problem you might have is is time zone but if you're mm. over on the european side uh jammy jew over on twitch is definitely a guy that you should check out cool all right uh my second last one is uh shino or shino tv mm. mm-hmm. uh this guy has the perfect narrator voice oh yeah <laughs> he has the perfect narrator voice like if he was around when Dragon Ball Z needed a narrator, he mm-hmm. probably would have stole that job. <laughs> uh, this guy just fantastic the way he speaks and, and interacts with the game. Currently playing Suikoden and Tactics, seeing him react to how dark the story is is mm-hmm. definitely very entertaining. Uh, also, lives a crazy life. Uh, he's like he's a, he races on like uh, motorcycles. I think. Oh it was, wow! Or, okay. Or, uh, the guy does like some pretty crazy things in real life and yeah. uh, shares that on his on his. Uh, his Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, so that's definitely a guy that you should watch. Yeah, honestly, you could probably just listen to him because he narrates the game. And the way <laughs> he narrates the game is just, you can see, you can just envision things happening. The guy is a mm. great narrator. Honestly, I, honestly, I think that should be his job. Okay. That's cool. And the last one, most people know who he is. Uh, he is dreamy warrior. Also known as John with an H. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, this guy has like a shrine dedicated this weekend. <laughs> I don't know if you can find a bigger fan than Dreamy Warrior or John with an H, whichever he may want to co- go by. Uh, Dreamy Warrior is what he is on Twitch. John with an H is what he is over on uh, on Twitter. Yeah. This guy just has like he has every single playthrough. Uh, he narrates all of it. It's fantastic. He knows every little thing about every game. Hmm. He is what you call a Suikoden super fan. Okay. So definitely go follow him over on on Twitch. Follow him on Twitter. <laughs> very very uh, very nice down to earth guy. Uh, really really uh, person interpersonal. Like he'll he'll talk with pretty much everybody. He's a great dude. Cool cool. Yeah I I think I yeah, I recognize him because uh, Hellfire RPGs called him. Uh, John with a H instead of an H. Yeah, yeah. Shoot. Okay. Cool. There you go. So that, that's everybody. That's everybody. That's everybody. Cool. So that's that's all the creators that we want to highlight. Uh, that's covering Sui Code and, and Eudin Chronicles. Um, actually, so be, I, I actually didn't mention. Uh, so before we finish off today, um, we had some questions and opinions uh, out there because uh, I, I just I threw it out there and on Twitter and on social media. So we'll go through these really quick. So I asked uh, in Karkala's uh, discourse, hey, anybody want to you know say anything or talk about anything sweet coding? Uh, let me know, and then I'll, we'll talk about it. So uh, let's see, Bren, uh, Brenna Mania uh, in uh, Karkala's Discord, let's see, he says my my opinion is that sweet coding is literally the best. Can't can't deny, can't disagree with that. So of course I gotta agree with that. Uh, so uh, Brenna Mania said that Karkala asked. Uh, I want to know why there is only one cat in one, in one, and why it runs away again when you bring them to the castle. It's not fair. I want more cat. She, she wants cats. She loves cats. <laughs> well, there is more cats. You have to play Suikoden in four. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> there is cats everywhere in Suikoden in four. Yeah, yeah. F- I don't think there's a single town. Well, actually, there. No, there is not a single town <laughs> that does not have cats. So. For all you Suikoden 4 haters, get lost because yeah. bring in the cat lovers. Yeah. There is cat people. <laughs> there Literally you go. cat people in Suikoden 4. So I, so I suggest to you to play Suikoden 4 because it's a great game and people should stop hating on it. There you go. There you go. And finally, uh, I think, yeah, Brendan Mania was just one, I was joking around here, but he was saying, I want to know why the description of soap in Suikoden is Bubbles Arise localization it wasn't as on point as, as it is, is is nowadays but yeah it was it was weird in terms of translating what pe- uh, things were saying uh in terms of the items uh but yeah that was uh Brenda Mania and Karkala on the on Karkala's discord and i believe i have uh let me see 
really quick. Another set of questions. Um, so on the uh, Stars of Destiny po- uh, podcast uh, Facebook page, uh, let's see. Um, Neko Chan Per asked, let me see, or I just mentioned, uh, she said, I'm very excited uh, for uh, for Yudin Chronicle. My husband and I have been playing Sweet Coding together since we first started dating. Uh, we bonded over it. We ended up playing all of them together. We have tattoos. It's a problem. So, like, that's, that's, that's awesome that you and your husband was able to just bond with the game that we all love. Uh, let's see. And then... First of all, oh, go ahead. having Suikoden in anything is never a problem. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah. And then... Oh, uh, let's see. Polly on the Facebook asks, is, there, is Unite Attacks going to be a stretch goal? Um, I don't think it's going to be a stretch goal. I think it's it's going to be a feature. It's going to be in the game. It's going to be in the game. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be in the game because it hasn't been talked about. I think we witnessed one. I believe we have. I believe I believe we did. Um, it, it wasn't mentioned about a stretch goal, but like it's that the fact that it's going to be in the game in some form or fashion. Maybe not in the form of what we were used to as United attacks, but it, as we always as uh, Luca just mentioned that we saw it in some form or fashion. So we, we're we're seeing it, uh, which is not a it's not officially that we're uh, that we're seeing it, uh, you know, in that sense. So um, let me see. Yeah, so that is all the questions. Oh, actually, no, 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 Twitter. I had Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> I had Twitter, too. So, Ryda at uh, Mia Ouch is, which stretch goals are you most excited about? Luca, what do you what do you think? Most stretch goals, uh, well, characters. Characters, definitely, for me, mm-hmm. uh, is a big one. And then, uh, most people say the mini games, but for me, it's just the castle like we've already achieved the ones that i really want yeah right uh so the ones i really wanted were you know the castle or the town Mm -hmm. uh i wanted to see more characters and then i wanted new game plus we got all three yeah i'm i'm ecstatic about it i'm super happy and i think the best ones are probably aren't revealed yet there's Mm -hmm. probably some ones that we haven't thought about and they're gonna drop them in we're gonna be like oh my god i want that and then we you know give them a bunch more money yeah so (laughs) right you know though i think we've already achieved the ones that uh I'm most excited about. Cool. All right. Um, let's see. I gotta look back again, but I think in, immediately the one I'm looking forward to, or excited about, uh, hopefully that we get to hit, is the is the dual system. Uh, I really would like yeah. the dual system to be come back in in that in some form or fashion. But uh, if we're talking about any of the stretch goals that we have already, um, the one that I'm really curious about is the uh, the party conversation one. Uh, Mm-hmm. That one is just I want to see what that what that system is going to be built on and how that's going to be done. I'm really curious about that one. Um, cooking, of course, you know if if it's if it's going to be this more of the same of like you know Sweet Conan Two, I, I'm for it. But if it's going to be evolved from that, I'm really for that too. So yeah, cooking and the party conversation uh, for me. So yeah, that is all of everything that was had to do with Kickstarter, the AMA. Um, questions uh you know recommendations on sweet coding creators we covered a, a lot and this basically this podcast um basically ran two hours uh, i don't know if i'm gonna split this or keep it as a whole i'm not too sure yet um but i think we should uh go big or go home go big or go home send the whole thing out send the whole go thing? big or go home all right all right all right yeah, i'll do that thing. i i think our viewers like it so much they'll sit through the whole two hours okay okay i challenge you people <laughs> sit through the whole two hours and you know what even if you spend the whole time angry that I don't like yeah. sweet, don't like uh, Final Fantasy IX right. or your crappy Godfather movies, <laughs> come on, go ahead and at me. There you at go. me. Die, pigs. Yeah. It, you want to at Luca Blight? It's right there on the video. At uh, Luca, Luca under, double underscore Blight. Um, yeah. Bring yeah. it. He, hundreds to kill me. He wants. He wants. He wants to hear. Hear. Hear the hot takes. So, uh, you can uh, find me at. Come at me, bro. <laughs> You can find me at, at Marco Polo 177 my personal Twitter, and at Nerd in the Bay uh, for the channel Twitter. Um, and yeah, that is going to be it for this episode of the Stars of Destiny podcast. Guys, thank you very much for just hanging out, watching, listening to us. Thank you for all the support uh, that you continue to uh, just listen, watch. I, I keep seeing like the numbers keep, like being consistent, and it's awesome. Uh, it's something that I, I didn't expect, uh, or we didn't expect. We just wanted to do this because like we have, we just have a passion for this game series that we love so thank you guys uh for uh, watching and listening we'll see you guys next time 
the next episode will probably will probably be at the end of the Kickstarter and see like you know anything new that came out of that, and then um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Like oh well, Luca, uh, what are, what are you up to in terms of like making content uh, for your channel and your and your Twitch? I know you've been streaming lately. Yeah, so uh, you know like usual, Final Fantasy Brave XVS. I've been doing a lot of uh, the content like that on YouTube. Uh, so you know we're we're starting to build uh, build up there. So. Final Fantasy Brave XP has consumed most of the YouTube action. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see other things, you want to see some, uh, R you know, RPGs streamed, come on over to my Twitch, uh, you know, King Luca Blight, because the true king of Highland mm -hmm. is Luca Blight. There you come go. on. <laughs> Joey, Joey is not a king. He is a fraud. There you uh, so is Agaris. <laughs> the only true king is Luca Blight. There you go. So come on over. Check it out. We play all sorts of things. You know, we're playing... Final Fantasy VII Remake. We're mm -hmm. going to be playing... Actually, we're going to be playing Dark Cloud very soon. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, we're going to play go. Dark Cloud. That's going to be a good one. Final Fantasy Type-0. We're going to have quite a few ones. And then eventually, we're going to build up and we're going to play Sweet It In. There you go. Luca Blight style. Oh, so, Die, okay. pig. Yeah, die. Yeah. <laughs> I, want to, I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to see that. Uh, cool. All right. That, that's, there goes Luca Blight. Uh, check him out on YouTube. Uh, Final Fantasy Brave XVS Luca Blight. Uh, Twitch. Uh, King Luca Blight uh, over at Twitch, so yeah, definitely check him out. Uh, you can find me uh, at Nerd in the Bay on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, we're doing a variety of things. Uh, we're doing a lot of let's plays of, let's see, uh, Mr. Shifty. We're doing, we're still doing uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, we finished Art of Fighting. We're probably gonna go towards Art of Fighting Two. Um, we started our Sweet Code and Two let's play, so uh, and the next video should be coming out on Monday, hopefully, um, and yeah just trying to keep it busy at the channel and i i yeah yeah that's pretty much it um yeah that's it so thank you guys again watching listening thank you for all the support uh for the podcast uh definitely check us out uh we have a facebook uh stars of destiny podcast and at twitter i believe it's stars destiny pod uh it couldn't give me the the whole thing but yeah uh we are we are on twitter as well uh, but guys, thank you very much for watching, listening, all that, all that jazz. We'll see you next time on the next episode of the Stars of Destiny podcast, your Sweet Coden and Iudin uh, only podcast. All right, take care, guys. Peace. <laughs>